Welcome to the Undisputed Podcast. I'm your host, Jenny Taft. This podcast is the full show from today's episode of Undisputed from start to finish. They've got a busy slate, so skip Shannon. Let's get to it. Good morning. Welcome to Undisputed. We are live from L.A. I'm Jenny Taft here with Skip Bayless and Shannon Sharp. Guys, what are we doing on this Friday? Uh, Lots to talk about. Am I ever in big trouble on Sunday? You are. You've got superstar Odell. You've got Hall of Fame down Matt Stafford. You've got the greatest defensive player in the history of pro football, Aaron Donald. And I'm stuck with Lilo Joe Burrow. Yeah, yeah, Lilo yeah, Joe. Yeah. He's you gonna feel get massacred. Yeah, what about your uh, net pick? Huh? How you feel about that now? My next pick. Yeah. Well, let's talk about it, now, shall we? I'm feeling yeah. real good about You feel real it, good? Okay. Like, even okay. better. Okay. We need to get some NBA breaking news. Okay, we're going to give our Super Bowl predictions in just a minute. But yep. first, we've yes. got to start with the blockbuster trade. It shook up the NBA yesterday. So here's the latest. After days of anticipation, the Nets and Sixers finally came to terms on a deal sending James Harden to Philadelphia with Paul Millsap in exchange for Ben Simmons, Seth Curry, Andre Drummond, and two first-round picks. And multiple sources claim Harden had riffs with not only Kyrie Irving, but Kevin Durant as well. Hey. Remember what could have been with this team. Shannon, who won the trade? Oh, who Shannon. Won it? Uh, you know who won it. Who won I it? do? The 76ers won, Skip. You're kidding. Okay, let me tell you why they won. How? Because they get James Harden, a player that can perform at elite level, versus Ben Simmons, who was giving them nothing. Oh. So would you rather have a car that's operational or a car that won't crank, that just sits in your yard on blocks? Because huh. that's what w- Ben Wait a second. James Harden is a car that won't crank. Oh, yes, he will. Yeah. Uh, let me see. This season, he's 22, 8, and 10. Mm. Um, I'm looking at uh, Ben Simmons' numbers. Zero, 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 mm. zero games played. Mm. Can I interest you in that? Mm, yeah, so, now that he's ready to play. Uh, nah, 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 oh, nah. oh, he's ready to play. Yeah. So what about James Harden? Uh, now, well. Jenny just read the report. And not only was it Kyrie, now I don't know why he would ever have any beef with KD. KD seems like the easiest guy ever to get along with. All he wants to do is hoop. Mm-hmm. He ain't trying to lead nobody. He ain't trying to lead nobody's life. Tell you what you should and shouldn't do. Mm-hmm. Hey, when they toss the ball up in there, let's go play, let's go play fellas. Mm-hmm. Skip, you look at what they gave. Daryl Murray just said last month, I'd be willing to take a top 40 player as long as it's the right fit. James Harden is better than a top 40 player. Mm-hmm. The only player that I believe J- uh, Daryl Murray would have preferred over James Harden is Dame Lillard. Mm-hmm. Dame Lillard is hurt. There's, I, I don't know if he's going to come back. He says he's going to take his time, as he should, because you just can't think about this year. This year is a lost cause. I got to think about moving forward. It's been reported they're going to build around him. Skip. But when I look at James Harden, and you love to point out that game. He did this to Rudy Gobert. He had 42 points. Do you realize in 274 games? You're talking about Ben Simmons. Ben Simmons. Yes. Mm-hmm. In 274 games played, Ben Simmons has scored more than 35 points once. Mm. James Harden once averaged 36 points mm. for an entire season. Once upon a time, he did. Uh, last year, he was 25, 8, and 11. Mm. He, do you ever think in his long-legged life, in his seven-foot life, Ben Simmons will ever average 25, 8, and 11? Mm. And another one more thing I want to share with you. Mm. How much are you going to be able to play him down the stretch in cr- crunch time? Can you play him? Now, I, you got, I, I'm not even worried about Kevin Durant. Kevin Durant is by himself. Mm. But let's just say your closing lineup. Is your closing lineup going to be Seth Curry? Five foot ten, mm. Kyrie Irving, six foot two, mm. Patty Mills, six foot. Mm. What's your closing lineup gonna look like? Mm. You are a defensive liability. Tell me when it's, it's my not turn. your turn just yet. Not your turn just yet. So right now I'm looking at Milwaukee, Philly, and Miami. Mm. Better than you. Mm. And you know what, Skip? <laughs> I love this. I want to know who put this together. Mm. Cause Skip, look, six is one to trade. I'm disappointed with James Harden because he's added. He did it again, Skip. He powdered and moped his way, got out of shape. Thank you. We came out of shape. Yes, it, it, keep, keep going. It, Preach. Used to, no, but no, no. But two, two times in two years. He, he, yeah. Under two years. Yeah. But here's the thing, though, Skip. We know when James Harden is motivated. Oh, skinny James. Oh, oh, oh skinny James. We're going to see that skinny James? Yeah. James? You know, they got skinny cow dessert. They got skinny girl cocktails. Mm-hmm. And we got skinny James Harden. Mm-hmm. Oh, Philly and the money. And I said, get your skinny popcorn <laughs> ready. Yeah, right? So you know about skinny pop, then, okay? I, okay. I eat it. <laughs> oh, you like skinny pop? Religiously, yes, I do. I love it. You about sister, I'm going to get my skinny popcorn ready. <laughs> 
to watch just how long James lasts with the Sixers. <laughs> no, no, no. Yeah. We ain't talking about how long. That was not the question. Mm. We, the question was how long is he going to last? Who won the trade? Mm. The Sixers won the trade. You don't really believe that. I do. You don't really mean that. And by the way, to your first point, I'll just read out of one of the reports. What did he say? The Nets remain the consensus favorites to win the NBA title after Thursday's trade. And then it goes into all the different sports books. Consensus title favorites remain the Nets. Okay. It's because they won this trade by 50 points. If you want to just do it for an NBA game, this was a 50-point <laughs> oh, oh. in favor of the Nets. Oh, no. Why, why, go bigger. Go bigger. Go Memphis when they beat OKC. What was it? By, by 73. 73. Okay, I'll go <laughs> Memphis over OKC by okay. 73 points. <laughs> Shannon. The Nets managed to get three starters out of this because I don't know if you remember the big penguin. Oh, now you love him. All of a sudden, once he got out of LeBron's shadow, the oh, big penguin, God. Andre Drummond, has been flat out balling for the 76 really, in place of Joel Embiid. He gets to play 18 minutes a night and he's averaging nine rebounds a game in 18 minutes. It's six, nine and two, but he goes in and just dominates the glass. What has been the glaring hole weakness in the middle of the net? Yeah, they, they don't have that guy. And all of a sudden they got big penguin in the middle of their defense and really their offense is an offensive rebound. They just haven't had that kind of presence. And once he got out from under LeBron, because LeBron, the goat, as you call him, quote unquote, always needs a scapegoat. And I believe that the big penguin got scapegoated last year. Oh, now he got sudden, scapegoated. All of a sudden, he's putting up massive numbers because he is a massive his human number, being. Yeah, you do realize his numbers was better with the Lakers than they are in Philly. Nine rebounds a game. He averaged double digits minutes. for the Lakers. If you do per 36 minutes, he's averaging 17 rebounds a game. That's all they needed. That's a beautiful, sweet move. That's like, thank you. Game over. And Seth Curry is a 40% three-point shooter. Who, who th This is his career low this year. He's shooting 40%. Well, they'll take that because they probably have lost Joe Harris for the whole year because it sounds like he might even need another ankle Second surgery, surgery. Yep. on top of his mm -hmm. first one. But w you love Patty Mills, right? Mm -hmm. So Patty Mills will take up the Joe Harris slack. Seth will be in the starting lineup. And listen, late game, ball in hand. I'll take Seth over Steph Curry on on game winning shots, on big shots, on game turning shots. I, I'll take Seth over Steph any day or night. But you do realize he's small, so how's he gonna play? And how are you gonna be in the lineup? Uh, because there's this guy Ben Simmons who's six feet ten inches tall, and to all your points, all he did was win Rookie of the Year, then go boom, 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 three straight All Star teams, and boom, boom, two straight All Defensive teams. What? And you're going to throw him in the middle of this as a, as, to use Kevin's favorite word, his operative word last night, a versatile. You, you don't get any more versatile of a player than Ben Simmons. He can facilitate. He, he's this. one of the better passers in the game. Yeah, he can pass and at off. six feet, 10 inches tall, he can flat out dominate a center or a forward or even a, a little maestre as he took him out of game seven last year. Maestre shot five of 23 because Ben Simmons engulfed him. Him last year, and all of a sudden the Nets are going to have a real live defensive player in their midst. You're right, but here's the thing: in the fourth quarter, five minutes left in the ball game, three minutes left in the ball game, Ben Simmons became unplayable. Okay. Doc Rivers benched the man, right, the guy that you, the three All Stars, the two, the All Defense got to sit okay. down. All right, here, here's my point: all that matters is the Nets still have the best player. On the planet by far to me. Kevin Durant is separated himself. He will come back after the All-Star break. I'm going to assume he's going to be 100%. Okay. And I could see last night on TNT, he will be 1,000% motivated because he went way out of his way, <laughs> all the way to the bottom of the draft against your man LeBron, <laughs> saying no to James Harden. No, 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 no. I will not take him. I will take Rudy Gobert at the bottom of the draft it, over James Harden because he's done with James it, and he is now re-motivated, recommitted to go win himself another championship. LeBron was laughing too yeah, much. he was. He was covering it up. I, I guess that's why he needed his clipboard, right? <laughs>
Cover his face. I Way mean, he go. did everything. LeBron did everything he could to try to get he James Harden placed on Kevin Durant's team. He even who'd he take? Fred Van Fleet. <laughs> at the end? Yeah, I'll take Fred Van Fleet. I'll leave you, James Harden. Right. Congratulations. Mm-hmm. No, right. I won't do it. That's Kevin. That's vintage Kevin. Right. You could see he is recommitted because, as he said at the end, let me get the quote exactly right here. His point was that we finally have players who want to be here. Right. Oh, really? Well, Kevin really wants to be there. Kyrie is as clutch as they ever have come down the pipe. Yeah, on the road. Yep. Well, okay. (laughs) Again, this will all hinge upon a vax mandate. Will it be lifted in the city of New York with the boroughs that include Brooklyn? Will it be lifted in a month or two months in time for the playoffs? It might be. There's a lot of speculation that it will be. I don't know. I have no idea. That's out of my league. But if it is, and if Kyrie can play the home games, I do not know what physical condition Ben Simmons is in. So I can't speak to that. Well, it took Kyrie two weeks. It took Kyrie two weeks. So how long is it going to take Ben Simmons, who's been out for three months? I just don't know. I don't know about his mental state right now, but they said he's undergoing counseling. I just think you change his scenery, you get him out from under. You were the first to first guess yeah. that. They threw him under the bus. Told, He'll <laughs> never work again. Double. You might as well forget about it. Yep. And Rich Paul said, nope, nope, nope. And I kept saying, I think the Sixers are just going to hang in there until this presented itself, where finally the, the Sixers are saying, well, <sighs> If we could really get James Harden, yes. well, you can get James Harden, but Daryl Morey, you're living in the past. You discovered him. You sort of created him yep. and all of his mystique, and he was all-time sensational. <clears throat> Greatest perimeter scorer we have ever seen. I do not argue that. Once upon a time. But Skip, he was your third in the MVP voting last okay. year All at 25, 8, and 11. We have had back-to-back years in which he flat-out quit on a team I, to get I'm not, I, I'm not condoning and, that. And I, I, listen, what I have learned about James Harden, and I did love the Nets, but I love them because of the centerpiece, because of Kevin Durant. Okay. And I thought, if you put Kyrie over here and you put James over here, well, Kevin's going to rise and shine because he rose and shone with right. the with Golden State Warriors, yeah. didn't he? With yeah. back-to-back mm-hmm. finals MVPs. He went in there and took over a team that had Steph and Clay and Draymond. Right. Okay. So now what what I keep seeing from James, and I told you this yesterday, so I've been first guessing this really for a couple of weeks on this show. James looks like he's 32 going on 42. And you completely admitted and acknowledged once you start hitting 32 and you're no workout warrior, he is the flip side. (laughs) He, He is as far from LeBron James as you can get. Yeah. There is no weight room for him. There's no extra cardio for him. There's no exercise bicycle for him. (laughs) He's not going to do that. He's just saying, I play basketball. I will play my way into shape. And at some point, if you don't change your nutrition, what what you've put in your mouth will just, you'll wear it. And he's wearing it right now. Mm -hmm. He looks out of shape and and we're almost to the all-star break. Yes. And then the other problem is, He's always hurt because he does not take, yeah, care, of don't take care of himself. So you okay. can always keep you're, him You're going to pull this. You're going to hurt this, pull mm-hmm. this, hurt this, pull this, hurt this. So here's my bottom line takeaway. You know how much I love Joel Embiid when he's healthy and I should add when he's happy. So the odds on James Harden and Joel Embiid remaining healthy and happy for extended periods of time are 10,000 to one. That's what I'm going to say to that. 10,000 to one. Both of them. We're talking about healthy and happy. James Harden and Joel Embiid. Healthy and happy, I'll go 10,000 to one against for an extended period of time, such as a playoff run. All the things that I've been trying to tell you about Joel Embiid, now you want to try to use the ammunition okay. against me. I, I don't doubt that he's having an MVP year, but he was having it last year. In fact, if you look hard at the numbers he's putting up right now versus last year, last year was better. Seriously, it's a little better. He was shooting a little better from the field, uh, quite a bit better from three, and quite a bit better from the free throw line a year ago. And I kept telling you, it's he. This is the guy. Mm -hmm. This is the best big man in basketball. Right? No, it's Yoke. It's Yoke. Yoke. Okay, I got it. But in the end, I still love him. But I could never defend what kept happening in postseason runs when he'd be hurt and then he'd be sick, and then he'd be hurt and then he'd be sick. He let Kawhi Leonard break through and win a championship because he was hurt and then he was sick. And he was hurt and he was sick, Mm -hmm. right? Right. He's got stomach flu. I don't know what he's got. Mm -hmm. It's always something with him. And you want to talk about unhappy factor? 
Shannon, they don't fit. James and Joel do not fit. And I love Joel. I'm out on James now just because I don't trust his intangibles anymore. Now you don't trust him. Now he didn't want to play with. Oh, but let that have been a super. Wait, 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 wait a second. They don't fit together. Why? Right. Because, because roll, Joel pick. needs the basketball. Go give it to him. Joel will post and and post you. Go He'll post you up on Twitter. He'll post you on IG. We're going to give it to he him. He will posterize you. Get it to him. You, you will not get it to him Beat because him. James needs super high waist to the basket. He needs you to spread the floor, and then every once in a while, he needs somebody for a lob dunk to follow That's him up. That's Joel and B. Okay, is it Joel and B? Yep. Joel, you're the what, what is the, Russ call it the dunker position yeah. where you go stand on the baseline until <laughs> it's time to go in for a lob, yeah. right? And it, it, he he doesn't do that. He doesn't do windows, so to speak. Joel needs the basketball because he will post you and scorn you. He creates his own shots. He does not need some James Harden, ball dominant, the, the most ball dominant player in the league, even beyond Russ, to create shots for him. Well, and, and James used to be able to get to the rim at will. And now it looks like Will can guard him because he's lost some athleticism it, because he's lost a lot of shape. It's funny. All the concerns that you have about James Harden now, you never had those concerns when everything just was quit smooth. On his second oh, okay, team. just it say that he quit. No, no. Okay, say that he quit. But now you're trying to say, oh, he's not a guy. He the 22. I mean, how many guys? Only two guys have been selected to every All Star game the last decade. One is LeBron James because he's been the 18 straight, and the other is James Harden. Yep. You're living in the past. Skip out. Okay, so it's, so it's 22, 8, and 10 this mm -hmm. year. Currently, in the is that the past? Can I hit some of the lowlights of James Harden meltdowns in the postseason? Because yeah. there are yeah. too many for this show. We would need the rest of the oh, show to detail them. But it started in 2015 in the conference finals. Remember the closeout game at Golden State? Yes. It was an NBA playoff record 12 turnovers. Yes. 12 turnovers in one game? Yeah. That's beyond Westbrook. Yeah, that's, that's, that's the right? NBA record. Okay, thank you. And then 2017 against my Spurs in the closeout game at Houston, and there's no Kawhi Leonard for my team, and I'm thinking, I'm cooked tonight. Uh, they're still looking for James Harden in that okay. game because he completely disappeared, and they lost at home by 39 points to the San Antonio okay. Spurs. And then 2018, they're up three games to two on Golden State, and they lose game six by 29. And then in game seven at home, James Harden goes two of 13 from three. It's, it's just no show after no show after no show. And then obviously 2019 against Golden State, it's tied 2-2 and they lose game five and game six because James Harden is nowhere to be found. You know what, Skip, that was, those are great points. But I didn't notice last year when they made the trade for him in Brooklyn, you didn't pr present that PowerPoint presentation. You didn't mention anything about his playoff failures. You talked about KD, KD, Kyrie, and James Harden. Your man LeBron James is cooked. Mm -hmm. Now all of a sudden, mm -hmm. he doesn't want to play in Brooklyn. I don't know. These are speculations that said he had him running with Kyrie. Kyrie, they were button heads. He and KD was button heads. I don't care. But now that he's not there, you want to present what I he did. I thought he was going to be able to go along for a great ride <laughs> oh, with Kevin Durant. Ride. And then what happened? Right on cue, right on schedule, last year against Milwaukee. He got hurt. Kevin Durant played the series of his life. I'm not sure a mortal this side of Michael Jeffrey Jordan could play better in a seven-game series against a really good basketball team, a team that was on its way to winning the championship yeah. than what Kevin played last year against the Bucs. It went full seven games plus an overtime. And what happened right on cue, Kyrie misses the first four games. I'm sorry. Second, the second four uh, the games. The second four games. But it was James who got hurt in the first game. He pulls his hamstring. Mm -hmm. So he missed the first four games in mm -hmm. total. Then he comes back and allegedly is playing on one leg. Remember the breakaway layup where he couldn't even he couldn't he could even accelerate fight back. To the yeah, he, he couldn't pulled even it turn out. He and pulled run. It, okay. pulled it back out. And in game seven, this is at Brooklyn, at home. This is James Harden with Kevin needing just a little help because there's no more Kyrie. James Harden shot 5 of 17 and 2 of 12 from 3 in that overtime loss. And obviously, Kevin hit the shot of shots, one of the great playoff clutch shots I've ever seen, and he had 
his little toenail on the line, mm-hmm. and it cost them the game. I thought it was over, but it wasn't over, and it goes to overtime, and Kevin hit the wall. He had you can't hit the wall. to give. No, you can't hit the wall. Kobe would have never hit the wall. Michael Jordan would have mm-hmm. never hit the wall. Larry Bird would have never hit the wall. Magic Johnson would have never hit the wall. That's what you told me, because when people were trying to tell you LeBron hit the wall against the Golden State Warriors, mm-hmm. you said the best player in the NBA can't hit the wall. Mm-hmm. So I don't want to hear anything about Nobody, hitting or the wall. Nobody has ever, no superstar has ever had less help in a big playoff challenge series than Kevin had in that so one. Let, so let me, so, he, re, he had no Kyrie to speak of and little to no James. So, so LeBron James going against, the, going against the Golden State Warriors with Katie, Steph, Clay, and Draymond. Kevin Durant had more help in Brooklyn than LeBron had in that series. Well, was there... Was there a Kyrie? Is it, no. Was, oh, in the set, the last Yeah, one. yeah, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah. They were, they were pretty good. The, uh, well, well, they were I mean, pretty good the, now. The Nets had nobody. Who so, was left? So, so, see, Blake Griffin? Oh, no, no, no. You like Blake Griffin. I used to. Uh, he's well, another no, no. one. He, you, you realize he, he's not even in the rotation anymore. Yeah, with the but I remember, I remember when he first got there, and all of a sudden they, were, they weren't expecting anything of him. He started running his mouth. Oh, people thought I was washed up. Oh, the Detroit this. No, no, no. Detroit expected you to be a game changer. Mm. You could no longer be a game changer. You could be a great, a good role player, mm. and that's what he became. But see, what you're trying to do now, you are on the, you're on the outs against James Harden, and you want to bring up all of his flaws. The very flaws that he packed up and took to Brooklyn with him that you overlooked. All I know is I've learned my lesson with that guy. (laughs) The lesson is he will always disappoint you. That's the truth. He will always let you down. (gasps) Always. You'll get to the precipice of some greatness, some big achievement, Mm. and he will let you down. Let you down, He will let the Sixers down. He will let the city of Philadelphia down. And that city will let him know about it. Did he let the Brooklyn Nets down? Sure he did. Why he do that? Well, I, I I don't know. Last he, year, he, he, you can't go with some hamstring. He's always pulling his hamstring. But, but when you least need it to happen, he pulls his hamstring. So, so what is it about? There's another guy on the team that seemingly everywhere he goes, he lets people down. Mm. He keeps stuff going. Unless, One Kyrie Irving. It's time to make the shot of shots to save LeBron what, James in Game Seven. He saved it. Well, why did he make that shot in, in Boston? Mm. Why did he know. make those shots? Why did he make those shots in Brooklyn? Mm. Well, okay, I, I here's a chance out. Kevin Durant's out. Okay, Kyrie, it's your turn. You said you were the equivalent of LeBron James. You wanted the same treatment. Kevin Durant is out. James Harden is gone. Show us what you got. Show us what you got. Ten straight. That's what we know. Ten straight. That's how many games. How many, Kyrie? Mm-hmm. Okay, then. That's what I thought. Yet the Nets remain the consensus favorite to win the NBA title. Why is that? Let me ask you a question. Because of that seven-foot monster who's about to come back. Let me ask you a question. Who's favored to win the NFL title? The Rams. Does that mean anything just because you're favored on paper? And Fox Bet says that. That doesn't make it true. You still got to play the game. Well, we're talking about who won the trade. I think that screams back at you. The Nets won the that trade. That 13? 13, mm. going to Philly with Joe L. B. You got going no over the process. You got no. He use. processing everything yeah. too in the East. I think Ooh. I just deprocessed no, no, no. all of your Excuse arguments. You had to, why you look? The man wasn't happy when Kyrie didn't want to. Kyrie didn't want to play under LeBron James. Now mm. there's another guy didn't want to play up under the best player in the NBA. Mm. And you mad about that? Because mm. if it was LeBron James, you'd be I, on I'm, that key, key, key. I'm not mad about it. I'm happy about it because Ben Simmons. I, I'm a big fan. I got to tell you, he can flat out play basketball. I'm a big fan of KD. Mm-hmm. I like KD. KD is low maintenance. Mm-hmm. KD just want to hoop. That KD ain't right. all about all that other stuff, that extracurricular. KD want to put that beanie on, come out there, get them shots up. KD going to ball. I got no problem with KD. And I, I, for me, I'm like, well, damn, he had a problem with KD? What the hell KD do? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I get Kyrie burning sage and all that other stuff and <laughs> in, he's out, all that stuff. I get that. That can worry on you, Skip, because everybody ain't about that. No. Nope. Everybody don't like incense. <laughs> No. But you come to my house, I'm burning there. candles. Mm-hmm. So if you don't like candles, don't come to my house. <laughs> you ha- that's what you do, do? Yeah, I do. I like burn can- candles. I burn candles. You're an incense guy? Yeah. Not incense, just candles. Candles uh-huh. You know, I got no I club shades in. 5 a.m. Yeah. No, 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 we talk about the, the wick by. incense. Oh. So, guys, the Nets will play in Philly in no less sense. than a month. So can you imagine how the fans are going to react to see Simmons again? I can imagine not a warm welcome is coming. I hope he can play in Philly. He can't go back to Philly. Oh, mercy. 
just two days away from seeing a new Super Bowl champ crowned. And while a lot of the hype is surrounding Joe Burrow and the Cinderella story of the Bengals, Matthew Stafford and the Rams are still four-point favorites, according to Fox Bet Sportsbook. So this is the moment, Shannon. Who wins and why? Well, I've been with the Rams. Um, I thought they. I, I think this is the most complete team, both offensively, defensively, and special teams that the uh, Bengals have pl- faced in the playoffs. Um, their teams might, might have been better offensively, slightly better defensively, but I think when you combine the two together, Skip, when you combine all three of the phases together, I think the Rams are the most. Com- the Rams are the most complete team the Bengals are going to face. I love. I love the connection. Matthew Stafford, the offensive player of the year, Cooper Cup. Hmm. Dang, Cooper Cup must be the best receiver in football. Mm. Huh. Who knew? Oh. Shocking. I wonder why, old, I wonder why old LA getting 15 targets a game. Huh. Why he ain't the number one receiver? Cooper Cup is offensive player of the year. How many receivers have ever won that award? Huh. Not very many. Huh. He well, did it. Why didn't Odell win that award? Because he's the superstar. Devontae. You huh? say Devontae Adams is the best receiver in football. He didn't win it. By the way, the guy who should have won offensive player of the year was not there last night and was not honored last night. What we to are. my shock, and his name is Thomas Edward Patrick Brady Jr. If he's not going to win MVP, he has to be offensive. No, he had, no, he couldn't. Because Pro Football Focus, your favorite website, made a cl- sh- closed, shut case that Brady was the MVP. Clearly, the voters do not work for Pro huh. Football Focus. Okay. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. And Aaron Rodgers blew him away for the MVP. But we talk about that another time. The defensive line, I believe they're going to get out to Joe Burrow because I think that's the weakness of their offense is the, de- is the offensive line. Aaron Donald, Von Miller, Lena Floyd, Greg Gaines. I love Ashawn Roberts. I love the rotation that they have, sending bodies in and out, being able to continuously get pressure on Joe Burrow. Skip, mm-hmm. look, playoff run defense, the 49ers, we know they can run the football. Held them to 50 yards on 20 carries. We saw 51 yards against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Mm-hmm. Neutralized our corner, that uh, vaunted running attack for the uh, Arizona Cardinals. So they can shut down the run. We know uh, Mixon can run the football, but he's been relatively quiet, but he's always a threat. I just expect the Rams to do what they've done in the postseason. And that's with the, except, with the exception of the uh, 49ers, Skip. They score a bunch of points. They can score. Now, I don't believe Cincinnati's defense is as good as the 49ers. But maybe that has a lot to do with them being good and them playing a division rival, knowing each other so well. I know what you like to do. You know what I like to do. It's a little bit of a struggle. More times than not, when a team faces a division rival in the playoffs, mm-hmm. it's normally a nip and tuck ball game. Mm. Here's the concern for me if you're a Bengals fan. The Bengals have been very, very bad in the red zone. Only 36% touchdowns in the red zone. Four touchdowns on 11 trips. And you know you win championships by kick, uh, scoring touchdowns, not kicking field goals. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to take the Rams. The Rams will be celebrating. There's nothing like celebrating. This is not having a bunch of people over to skip to watch a game mm-hmm. and the team that you're rooting for wins and you kick everybody up out of there disappointed as opposed to going to someone else's house and their team wins and you got to leave disappointed. Mm. So the Rams are at home. Mm. They're going to be celebrating. I'm going to be right there with them. Me and Odell are going to be dancing in the locker room. I'm going to be pouring Gatorade on everybody. Mm. Rams 31, Bengals 27. 31 to 27. I'm surprised you went that high on both scores. Yeah. I'm not sure the Rams can score 31 on that Cincinnati defense, which is just woefully underrated. At they got 30, they got 30 on what's called Tampa's defense. You're giving Joe Burrow 27 against the Rams' vaunted defense, Mm -hmm. one of the greatest ever to play in a Super Bowl, because they do have the greatest defensive player ever as their centerpiece, right? Aaron Donald. Yeah. You uh, uh, do you remember um, that Super Bowl when they had Mean Joe Green and they had Ham and Lambert and all those guys? They had like. 15 Hall of Famers on the field, Ten. and the score was 35-31. Mm-hmm. How did somebody get all those points with all well, those well, Hall of Famers? talking about Roger Staubach and Drew Pearson and Tony Dorsett, and I can go on and on. It was a cavalcade. The, the, my Cowboys had seven Hall of Famers on the field. Donnie Schell, Hall of Fame. Joe Green, Hall of Fame. I don't think Mel Donnie Blunt. Shell made it to the Hall of Fame. Yeah, Donnie did Shell he? just went last year. Did he? Yeah. Okay. Okay. I, I, I just did something about this, and I looked at it, and I yeah, didn't he, see Yeah, Donnie he Shell. finally went last year. Okay, well, get... then they got 11. Yeah, they, yeah. Okay. The Steelers had 11. Yeah, that, the Steelers do. Uh, yeah, the Cowboys that, have seven, okay. including Drew Pearson, who should have been in like right, 30 right. years yeah, ago. Yeah, so they, they had yeah. a thing. Yeah, so think about this. That's 18 Hall of Famers in a game. Okay. 
So I, I told you, I've said this before. Greatest collection oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You of never, pro football talent I've ever no, seen on never, one field was that day. Yeah. It was Super Bowl thirteen in Miami. Yeah, you're never gonna January have January of seventy nine. You're never gonna have that many again. Nope. Okay. No. no. So I'm I'm taking I'm taking the Rams. Well, I, I hear that and I see that, but I don't get that. Why? By the way, to hear everybody tell it this week, Jenny just said right now the Rams are four point favorites. It feels oh. like they should be one four point favorites, like fourteen. <laughs> nah, nah, no, nah, it does. Nah. It does. And I can't nah. wait. We're about to have the Ram ambassador Eric Dickerson on here in just a few <laughs> minutes. And we'll see. He's getting more and more carried away. He'll have him winning by twenty eight or thirty. You tricked or, him in the twenty or twenty. I, I didn't 20. trick him, he tricked himself. <laughs> it's called betting with your heart over your it head. Is, it that's is. That's fine. Knee jerk reaction, <laughs> overreaction. Okay. I'm going to give you this. On paper, just at a glance, the Rams should win this game. Okay. The Bengals will win this game. Matt Stafford, on paper, should be. He's set up. The, the skids are greased for him to be the MVP yes. of this game because they're going to throw it probably a lot because their coach has a huge ego and he wants to say, watch this. Yeah. And yet, Joe Burrow will be the MVP. I'm going to say it one more time to you. This is my bottom line to this game. There's just something about Joe Burrow. There's something magical. There's something special. I believe he's going to arrive on the biggest stage in your sport on Sunday. It's made for him. And if you look at what he's done on the biggest stages at every level, it's been spectacular. Yeah. It's been special to death because it started with that high school playoff game that he was in. And he threw for 464 yards. They didn't win because they got outscored. But he okay. threw for 464 and six touchdowns. Six touchdowns? Mm -hmm. And then you don't need me to repeat that run to the college Oh, at LSU a senior year, yeah. Lord have mercy. The SEC championship game against Georgia. That's in Atlanta. That's 349 that he threw for in that game. And then my Sooners, I actually thought they had a shot in the game. He threw for 493 in that game and seven touchdowns, four in the SEC championship game. And then against Clemson, against Clemson, a national championship game, he threw for 463 and five touchdowns. So that's a grand total of 16 Three. touchdowns in three games with no interceptions. 16 to zero? Mm -hmm. Are you kidding me? And then all he did was go to Tennessee when I least expected it. I thought Tennessee would be right out here this week mm -hmm. representing the AFC. They had two home games to get to SoFi. Right. And Joe Burrow, Joe Burrow them. And then he, he turns right around and he goes to my homeboy at home. Mm -hmm. and Down 21-3. Down 21-3. And he does a number, but more important, the defense did a number on Patrick half, Holmes in the second half. He threw for 55 yards and scored zero points mm -hmm. in the second half. Never seen anything quite like that, which brings me to this defense. It caught fire. You've seen it happen where you can't explain it, mm -hmm. but I also pointed out to you the day after they beat Mahomes, it's loaded with a lot of second and third round picks right. and a couple of first right. round picks, mm -hmm. but it's all high picks everywhere. And all of a sudden, it detonated right on schedule. Mm -hmm. And it, it, this league is all about who gets hot when. Yes. And it got hot when, yeah. right on time. Right. And all of a sudden, it got opportunistically hot where it's creating turnovers right and left. The little pass gets batted up in the air by, by a Hill. Yeah. The Mahomes pass that yeah. he intercepts and returns. Right. Okay? It just keeps happening where they keep causing, causing, right causing there. turnovers. Your quarterback that you love, Matthew Stafford, has always had the haywire gene in him. He's got some Brett Favre where he's got sensation. He's got all-time arm talent. He does. But because of the arm talent, sometimes the haywire gene kicks in because he thinks, I could do that. I could do that. I can do that. I'm just not sure he's built for this stage, and I am dead sure that Joe Burrow is. Well, Skip, I mean, he, well, he's shown you in the playoff that he's built for these moments. To go down and stare Tom Brady face-to-face -face in his building, you give up that big lead because clearly Tampa had all the momentum. You mentioned they scored 24 unanswered points. So they had all the momentum, and in two plays, he had them in field goal range to kick the walk off. Last week, down 10, down 10 to start the fourth quarter. Sean McVay led the team, had never come back 
from a 10-point deficit in the fourth quarter. Mm. He did that. So he's showing you that these moments, he says, I've, I've, I've waited, I've, I'm built for these moments. I've waited for these moments. Now he has those moments. The thing that I love most about the Rams' defensive line, Skip, is that they've stopped the run. They know in order to get after your quarterback, we've got to stop you from running the football. They've stopped to get out the Calamari, they had to shut down James Conner. To get out the those, uh, uh, Tom Brady, they had to le- neutralize Leonard Floyd and Keyshawn Vaughn. To stop, uh, get out the Jimmy G, they had to stop the run, and they've done that. Mm. So now they know we got to stop mixing, we got to stop P. Ryan, but we're going hunting. Mm. We're coming after Joe Burrow because he's the head of the snake. Kill the head, tail die later. Super Bowl champ, Super Bowl 56 champ, mm. Los Angeles Rams. Obviously, the weakest link in this game is the Cincinnati offensive line that allowed nine sacks at Tennessee and lived to tell about it. Mm-hmm. But it somehow clicked and came back together in time to allow one sack, thanks to Burrow escaping be, a couple yeah, times, yeah. one sack at Kansas City. This line and this team loves that quarterback. They love him because they trust him to play poised, clutch football in the biggest moments. He'll, he'll make the right play in the biggest throw in the biggest moment. Right. So they believe in him. They believe in his swagger because it's not disgusting kind of swagger. It's not over-the-top swagger. It's, it's heartwarming swagger. It's like he's a little kid trying to do adult things a little bit. It's almost like Macaulay Culkin, who he looks like in Home Alone. <laughs> it's like he's trying to be an adult because the adults are gone. Right. Is, is this cool? He, he's really not cool at heart by nature, right. but he does cool things because he's he's trying to live up to his pedigree. He's right. he's the first pick, mm-hmm. and he knows that since Brady left, he knows he's the closest thing to Brady right. left of those young people. Yeah, well, I remember I remember a guy who used to dress like that come to press conference, and they said he was arrogant, and they said he didn't need to dress I like agree. that. I ain't gonna talk about Cam Newton used to be dressing like that and okay. doing all these things uh, way before Joe Burrow, and he didn't get the reception. But we're gonna okay, talk about that I'm, another I'm time. I'm just saying, so far with Burrow, it's endearing. Yeah. Maybe it'll become over the top, you know, it disgusting. Won't. Well, we'll see about that. But the point is. This team believes in him, and this team will play. Yeah, for him. absolutely. And I believe this line will play way over its heads in its helmets. They're going to have him. to. They're going to have to. They're going to have to figure out how to do it just on on sheer desire, where you just suck it up and say, "We just have to lay down our lives for him and right. do the best we can." Is he going to get sacked three or four times? Probably will. <laughs> right. Will he get sacked? Fumbled? No. Well, you got that's the thing. That, yeah, to, you got to hold on to the ball. You know, yeah, no turnovers. strip sacks. Yeah. You can't do it. And and. He, I'll give him maybe Burrow one interception, but but beyond one turnover in this game, you're not going to win. Right. I'll Skip, give him one. You're going to have to run the football. I don't believe I think you, Joe Mixon is. Yeah, he's Skip. He's going to have. He's going to have to now. He didn't start the, but if you look at that last drive, Skip, when they got in field goal range in overtime, Joe Mixon he took did. the game over. Yep. But prior to that, Kansas City had done a great job of neutralizing I, I just, him. Well, I've told you this since he was at Oklahoma. He's a difference maker. Yeah, oh yeah, he's and, right. And I believe he's they'll right. give him the opportunity yeah. to make a big difference in yeah. this game. So to me, the Rams' run to the Super Bowl is a little overrated because if you look hard at what happened, Arizona was just crumbling down the stretch like they have we for made two them crumble. years. Okay, well, I think it wasn't that hard to make them crumble. Okay, then, what about Tampa? At Tampa, what did you tell me all year? I don't see it. The the Bucs defense never detonated. It never clicked. It never took off the way it did a year ago when it got You didn't need that. Hold on. You didn't need that. You told me pro football focus graded Tom Brady. So I don't want to hear anything about defense because you never mentioned defense. Okay, I'm just telling you, they were overrated because the defense didn't go along for the ride the way it did last year. Oh, they went along for the ride, huh? Well, I mean, they they lived up to their their Uh, end of the bargain. They didn't hold up their end of the bargain. It's why Brady had to score 24 unanswered in the second half against the Rams. Right. Okay, and then we get to the 49ers. The 49ers, their division rivals, had beaten them six straight six. times. Well, the law of averages finally kicked in, and finally they said, you know what, we're sick and tired of this. We're going to the Super Bowl because no. it's in our house. The, the law of averages was Jimmy Garoppolo. That, okay. was, the, that right. was the law of okay. averages. Well, I, and you know what I call him, Jimmy Gag. <laughs> yeah, so, exactly. So, you bet with Jimmy Gag, okay. though. I, I'm sorry. I, I just thought they could keep him out of harm's way. And ultimately, it looked like they were for a while because right. they're up, what was it, 17 to 17, 7? 17-7. Seven. 17-7, seven. Yeah, yeah, seven. and then... The, the sky fell in, yep. right? Okay. So in the end, the Rams are, are vintage Hollywood. They are the Hollywood Rams because they got superstars 
that the Bengals don't. Burrow is on the verge of superstardom, but he has not arrived until right. he wins a game like this game. Correct. So the point is, I just believe deep down, when we get to the backbone of a football team, that Cincinnati is a little mentally tougher than the Hollywood Rams are. Right. That's just me. And I, I believe, as much as I like Odell personally, and we're about to go deep on him right mm -hmm. here, but I believe he's due to drop a pass. I, I just think he'll have one big drop because we've seen him drop big passes before. And I believe that Jalen Ramsey will lose concentration one time somewhere on Jamar Chase. It may be on T. Higgins. Nah, he'll, he'll be lose locked concentration. in. He lost it on Mike Evans. Yeah. And you know what? how that – Yeah, we are losing on 55 him. yards later, it was 27 to 20, yeah. right? And then – I believe that Aaron Donald, every once in a while, when you least expect it, just has a quiet game where he doesn't disrupt, this he doesn't it. wreck the game. Okay, well, we'll see about that, but I think... What about Vaughn? Okay, Vaughn, he might eat. They, they got eaters all across. They got it. Sure okay, do. all right, well, we'll see, because they, it feels like they've already won this game, which can be very dangerous, especially <laughs> when you're at home. I think home field will work against the home team Skip. because the pressure mounts for you to live up. You're at home. Right. You got this. But here's the thing. The Rams really doesn't have a home field advantage. You saw the 49ers. The 49ers took that stadium over. Mm -hmm. They talked about, like, hold on, can we, like, not sell our tickets to the opposing team. Okay, I got that. But the theme of the week is the Rams are playing a home Super Bowl just the way Brady it, played it, last yeah, year. Yeah. Okay, Brady's not going to spit the bit on that. He's not going to choke under yeah. the pressure to win at home. Well, I think they will start to feel the pressure, and it will tighten their throats in the second half I of this game. I don't think so. Maddie, I, Matthew Stafford mm -hmm. and, the, and, the boy, and the boy genius, mm. Sean McVay. Mm. Thank you for bringing him the, up. He coaches with his ego more than his brain. I think he's he's gifted. He's brilliant. But I believe his ego gets in the way because he wants to be the face of this franchise. Right. He wants to be the biggest star in Hollywood. And it bites him in the behind occasionally. And I think it'll bite him again in this game. I want him, I want him to wear a step of meat. I want to see how many yards, how many how many miles he run on the sideline because he's going to be tired running down to the end zone. Odell with one. Cooper mm. Cup with one. Scoop mm. and score. Mm. Oh, man. Mm. That old telling you, he's he going to be better than what he did against the Tampa. Mm. You know, because he stayed on running on the sideline with mm. D-Jack and all them touchdowns. Did, did he? Oh, I've, I've shown that too many times. That's, that's my favorite video yeah. of the year. Running all the way up the tunnel. I have never seen an NFL head coach ever do that Skippy once. Young, Skippy Young. Skippy yeah, Young. It's the social media yeah. age. I got it. Yeah. He, he's trying to out social media Odell. That's no, what he's no, trying no, to do. No. He wants to be as bigger, bigger than Odell. <laughs> Bottom line, final score for me. I got the Bengals winning this game 23 to 21, a much lower scoring game than okay. you forecast. Right. And I believe that Evan McPherson, their thunder-footed rookie, will pull it off again because he is as clutch yeah. as they come. Indoors, he might be good from 60. He might be good from 60. I think he is the new Justin Tucker who won the award last night for the play of the year, That's the 62-yard 66, 66, yeah. field goal that bounced 66. off, so I'm 66, it bounced off the crossbar. Yeah. Yeah. And – I think this kid is on the rise yeah. to rival him as the best kicker yeah. in football. So I will trust him to win this game 23 to 21. Okay. We got any do on it? Well, you're going to give me the four. No! No, well, this is the well, Super Bowl. It's four, right? This is the Super Bowl. I know, but you just made the case they're going to win by 14. And, and you just told me, hold on, you just told me you, Coach McYay tried to show up everybody. Odell is not that good. Okay, Matthew wait Stafford a not be. I, I've got 21 from Eric Dickerson, and you won't even give me four? No, uh, <laughs> That's no guts, you, no glory. You just told me Eric Dickerson bet with his heart. <laughs> bet with his heart, not with his head. You're not going to get me with that fool. Right. I feel like he may want to change that. I think the emotion yeah. of the moment. So going to let him change it. For ET? No, he's, I know no. <laughs> Around here. Uh, okay, we'll we'll settle a bet later on. I want to move on to specifically discuss Odell Beckham Jr. because you guys love talking about him. After leaving Cleveland midseason, OBJ has resurrected his career in L.A., playing a pivotal role in the Rams' run to the Super Bowl. And now Beckham is one win away from his first ever Lombardi Trophy. So, Skip, I understand you've got a question. I do. For yes. Shannon about Odell. So, what do you got? Shannon Sharp, mm -hmm. you reside in the Pro Football Hall of Fame. Mm -hmm. I had the utmost respect for you as a football player because you were a gamer, you were a baller, you were big play Shea, both in Denver and then when you got to Baltimore. Mm -hmm. 
When it was time to make a play, you made it. When it was time to lead your team, you were one of the greatest leaders in the history of the game. You and Ray Lewis were sort of side by side leading those Ravens to a championship in your year in Baltimore. Mm -hmm. You have winners intangibles. So it seems like we have been talking about Odell Beckham Jr. on this show for, for all six years we've done mm -hmm. it together. It feels like you and I have been debating Odell Beckham <laughs> for 60 years <laughs> since we've known each other. Yep. And yet it has troubled me up to this point. It has tormented me because I can't figure out why you love this still young man so mm -hmm. much. Because it would seem to me that everything he has done would run counter to what you were <laughs> as a football player. To the point where I say, how do you, how do you even like him? Mm -hmm. How do you defend him? How do you even glorify him? Because he's the flip side of Shannon Sharp. Mm -hmm. You were everything to me as a winner that Odell never has been. Mm -hmm. I don't trust Odell as a winner, and yet you've come completely around on him to the point that you mentor him. Mm -hmm. And I don't understand it. So I thought this would be a good moment for you to explain from the very bottom of your heart mm -hmm. why you love Odell so much. Skip, the thing that I love most about guys, I, like, I love maturation. I like I don't like when guys make a mistake, but if guys make mistakes, if guys do things early in their career, I'm a firm believer in change behavior is the greatest apology. It's the greatest mm -hmm. says, I'm sorry for what I've done. I've seen the evolution that Odell has gone through. I see what he was mm -hmm. in New York and I see what he became. He owned what he did. He knows that the behavior that he displayed in New York was unacceptable. I get frustration. I get not being able to do some of the things that I want to do and not getting targets. But as a professional, you always show a level of professionalism and some of the things that he did. But as I started to see him go to Cleveland, I started to see him start to evolve. Young people sometimes do dumb things. For me, yeah, I was a little bit more mature once I got to the end. I was a little bit more mature. I've always been mature, more so than people, guys my age that were, that, were, that were playing sports. It helped that you had a big brother it, who played it, it, at the it, highest it, level. It did. And for me, that was, that was the most important thing. But... To see what Odell, where he was mentally, because I think the physical tools have always been there. Absolutely. And to see what he's become, he's become very accepting of his role. The Odell in New York could not accept the Odell in, in, in L.A. He needed to get 12, 13 targets. And when he didn't, he lashed out mm -hmm. because he was in competition. Yep. You got, in order to be a great athlete, I believe you, the only person you can be in competition with is yourself mm -hmm. and to be a better version of yourself day and day. You can't worry about what Mike Evans is doing. You can't worry about what the guy over there is doing. Mm -hmm. And I think Odell was in competition with a lot of people. Now he's at peace. He's like, man, I'm Odell. Some people going to love me. Some people are gonna like, not going to love me. And... A lot of people have made up their mind, and so there's no moving one way or another. There's no wiggle room. So what he's become in talking to him, because when he was in New York, I never had a conversation with him. I know some of the things that I was saying about him he didn't like, but I think deep down guys know when I critique them, it's never personal. All I'm talking about is what your behavior is and how destructive it can be for a team. I'm not telling you something someone tell, told me, Skip. I've been in locker room, played NFL football for 14 years, and I won championships. Mm -hmm. I like to think I know a little bit about what it takes to win and how guys need to come together. And the type of behavior that he was displaying in New York is not conducive for winning. I'd say not. To see what he is now, to talk to him, he's a totally different man. A lot of things have happened. He's about to be a father. Mm -hmm. He's found a relationship that he's very happy in. He's very comfortable being Odell Beckham Jr., and I think that was the biggest thing. I think in New York, he tried to prove, he's like, I need to be the king of New York. I need to have this outsized personality. I need to do all these other things. But a lot of the other things aren't going to help you win. Yeah, it'll get you endorsements. It'll get you followers. It might get you uh, uh, endorsements. But it's not going to be conducive for you winning. Odell has turned himself into a winner. And you see the play, you see the production on the field. Like I said, Skip, guys go through things. The one thing, look, you make a mistake, man, damn, that was tough. But when you continuously make mistake after mistake after mistake, 
I cannot continuously come out here and make excuses for your mistake. That's why people get so upset at me at, at uh, AB. AB make mistake after mistake with Shannon. You know, hey, support the brother. I did the first time. You did. And then he did it again That's and true. again and again and again. Yep. So how many times does somebody get to step on me before it's not an accident? Agreed. This is who they are. Yep. Like I said, I believe Odell has changed. I love what I'm seeing. This is not the begin. This is not the beginning, Skip. This, I'm, excuse me. This is not the end. Yep. And what I tell guys, Skip, when they come into the NFL, this is not the end. Now, mm. retirement is the end. This is the beginning. Yep. Odell in, in L.A. is the beginning of something special. I don't know if it ends in L.A. where he comes back next year, but I love the man. What I'm seeing, I love the flower that has blossomed. Okay, I hear all that. And I would like to say up front before I launch on this, I, I do like him from a distance. We've gone back and forth on social mm -hmm. occasionally, but my gut feeling, knowing a lot of people around him, knowing some people who are very close to him, his heart is good. And I think you see yeah. that in your yes. conversations. Yes. And yet one very close friend of his told me that Odell is gifted at honoring his elders. So, so he's very good at being deferential. Remember, Chris Carter was sort of a mentor mm -hmm. a few years back, yeah. and then you became a right. mentor, and I think it's happened with several of the ex-great right. players, mm -hmm. in that when you talk to Odell, he will completely defer to you. There's no ego at all no. involved. He is receptive to right. every point you make. He's all ears, right. and he's soaking it up. Mm -hmm. And, and it makes you feel like that you're somewhat investing in his career because he's taking right. your wisdom to heart mm -hmm. and he's trying to do right. He's trying to, to fix this and, and grow up here and wise up over here. Right. So it makes you a little more part and parcel of his maturation because right. you've you've played a role in it. Yeah. Does that make sense? It, it does make sense, Skip, because I, I just ask I asked the guys, OK. What were you thinking here? Okay, but if you, if you time out, if you tried to do that with AB, he just would. No, he, no. He, he might be a little he'll, he'll, service. He's gonna give you an excuse. Yeah, he, okay. he won't. He's gonna fight back. Yeah. What, well, were you, uh, what were you thinking here? Yeah. Could you have handled it differently? Did you, in the process of you doing behaving like this, did you get six more balls in the game? Did you get this? So, so you doing that, it makes you look bad. It makes you look selfish when you said all you care about is winning. Well, it looks like to me, all you care about is getting your numbers and you don't care about the outcome of the game. Right. OK, I'm dwelling on the past, but where Odell completely lost me was that at the end of his New York tenure. Yes. And it started with the greatest catch ever, which launched him on social to what is he up to? Fifteen million on mm -hmm. Instagram, four million on right. Twitter. But he lost me completely when to prepare for that playoff game, his first up on the frozen tundra mm -hmm. of Green Bay, Lambeau Field. Right. He took three or four of his receivers to South Beach yeah. to, to take the day off on Trey Song's yacht. Right. And they posted about it. Mm -hmm. it, it maybe if they'd done it in secret, we, it's possible we'd never have heard about it. Right. right? Correct. But he posted. Right. And then. He doesn't back it up because he goes up to the frozen tundra and it was a cold weather game and he drops a third down pass on the first series and then he drops a pass to the back of the end zone. And then he manages to deflect blame, take the focus off himself because he leaves a big hole in the hallway wall outside the Giants locker room, which the New York media then fixated upon. Right. And that was really the end of him in New York because they decided after that more trouble than your work. Mm -hmm. OK, so then we go to Cleveland. Remember, we did the big, big story. My friend Mark Anthony Green did a cover story on Odell going to Cleveland. Remember? He's still Odell Beckham Jr. They put him on the cover of GQ yes. with a big fashion shoot right. photo spread, yes. right? Yes. Because he's huge. Right. We, we talked all week. He is the biggest name in this Super Bowl. Mm -hmm. He's the most popular figure in the Super Bowl. For once, it's the first time I can ever remember, and I've been doing this for a long time, where somebody besides a quarterback transcended the quarterbacks, mm -hmm. right? Yes. A receiver did, who, by the way, hasn't made a Pro Bowl in six years. Right. Well, in large part, I kept trying to defend him a little bit. He had, in Cleveland, three surgeries in yep. his last four years. Well, what do you think is going to happen? Right. One was an ACL. Tom Brady always says, that's a lifetime injury. Mm -hmm. You're never going to be quite right with that ACL because right. it's going to plague you the rest of your yeah. life. Mm -hmm. Okay? So 
obviously he had some decline because he lost just a little bit of quickness and speed, just enough that it brings you back to mortal, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so then he has a choice because they just cut him loose and say, you're you're free, you mm -hmm. go choose wherever you wanna go. Right. And the runaway speculation was Green Bay or New Orleans, go right. home to New Orleans or join Aaron Rodgers and, and Devante up in Green Bay. And out of the blue, in a shock to the world, he chooses the Rams. And, and you look at it and you say, well, they got Robert Woods because they had him for about 24 hours. They did. Right? And, and you say, well, Odell chose to go to some place where he's going to be like the fourth option, mm -hmm. maybe the third or maybe the fourth, depending right. on how Van Jefferson and Higby factor into right. it. And yet, to me, I believe he chose it because he didn't want the pressure anymore of having to be the savior, to be the guy in New York and the savior of the Cleveland Browns. He just said, I'm, I'm tired of this. And you can call it maturation. You can call it just realization of, hey, I finally figured out I don't need that. I'm not that guy. I don't have the temperament for it to be a number one. I don't have the backbone. I don't, I don't have the intangibles to sort of live up to being the guy. But if you put me in the shadows of Cooper Cup, I will shine in the shadows. Well, most number one receivers, they, Baker Mayfield was their quarterback, would not look like they're number one receivers. And I okay. think that was the biggest thing. Also, Skip, Odell had to understand change is inevitable. Growth is optional. Choose wisely. He chose to grow. He, Skip, the, in talking to him, he knows the mistakes. He knows the things that he did and how he did it. I shouldn't have done that. Okay, you're telling me that, but I need to see the change in behavior to make sure. Okay. And to your point, he's been a model citizen been a model as far citizen. as I know. Yes, I mean, yes, yes. He doesn't say much. But if you think he about does. it, Skip, for the most part, all of his teammates love him. And listen, across the board, they that's why, because he's got a good heart. And he defers to everybody. He doesn't come on with a bunch of right. diva ego right. to you. Right. It's not like I'm Odell and you're not. It, Skip, even when, even when I was critical of him with some of the things that he was saying, when it, the way he was behaving in New York, he would see me and he would say, hey, he'd come dap me up. He'd say, hey, hey, um, hey I need to I'm going I'm to holler at you. I'm going to get at you. Okay, fine. It never happened until it happened. Hell, I don't reach out to anybody. Hey, you want to talk to me? Hey, you can get my number. I, mm -hmm. I ain't hard to find. Yeah. And, you know, and, and Carver, not true. You're hard to find. <laughs> no, no, I'm hard to get on the phone. I ain't hard, <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not hard to find. Yeah. I hit you back with the K. Oh, <laughs> no, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But Skip, look, I, I just think the thing is another thing is that kind of like what you just did. You won't let him grow. You won't let him involve because we keep going back to the kicking net. We keep going back to Josh Norman. He did that. He did that. He made those mistakes. He was childish. He was petulant. Yes, he did all of those things then. But that was then. This is now. And there had to be growth in between those times. I've seen growth. Maybe no. Maybe maybe I'm blind. Maybe I'm too well, close I, to the situation. I'll, I'll give you growth. But I believe he has. Okay. And I believe things have changed in his life that forces you to okay. grow. I also think he's much happier now in a complimentary role where the focus, the spotlight going into this game, even though he's the most popular figure in the game, right. the spotlight's not on him. No. It's on the offensive player of the year. Right. Cooper Cup. Yes. Or Matthew uh, Stafford. Matthew, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, obviously, I believe they'll play bigger roles, but Odell knows, like, if they give me opportunities, and we see, Skip, remember when Fox Press first started putting the prop bets out, it was like 40, did it with the 50, did it with the 60, now it's like 75, 80. No, it's, it's what, 60. 60, 60.5? 60, 60, yeah, but, but like T. Higgins is 70, so he's not even up to T standards. But think about it, Skip, where That's, he went. We're talking about the over-under right, on, right, on, on the other yeah. receiver. Yeah. But he went from 40 in the first game wild card it weekend no, to 190 up. in yeah. the championship game. Mm -hmm. So it just goes to show you He's flourishing. He's mm -hmm. thriving in he the system. Flourishing. And when get, given the opportunities, all I'm saying is, the, don't count your opportunities, oh, make them count when you get those opportunities. He's like, hey, I'm going to be ready. Well, and, he will get his opportunities. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Eli Apple, he's going to probably have to face Eli Apple or Wouzier. They were teammates. I'm sure they went one-on-one -on -one against each other a he, number of times. He, time. Eli. he yep. and Eli mm -hmm. Apple. Yeah. He, pro he faced, probably faced a Wuzier when he was in Dallas. Probably, yeah. So... He feels comfortable. He well, feels he, he feels comfortable. He is going to get single coverage. Okay. Okay. Yep. Well, you get single coverage, you're going over Hundy. Okay. He here gets single coverage, you're going over Hundy. You heard it here. You first. sure did. He's he going Monday. over Hundy. Oh, all right. I won't forget that on Monday. All right. We'll have to wait and see. No mercy. 
getting me excited. The Rams and Bengals are set to battle for the Lombardi Trophy in a couple days, and L.A. is looking to duplicate what the Bucks did last year by winning a home Super Bowl. However, they'll have to handle Joe Burrow and company who haven't been afraid of anyone this postseason. And we're glad to be joined by Hall of Famer and the Rambassador himself, Eric Dickerson, to break down <laughs> the matchup. All right, Edie, last week you were so confident in your Rams. You gave Skip 21 points in a bet. Please explain why this will be a blowout for L.A. Or if you want to take it back, I can see what I can do to help here. Well, first of all, you know, Skip called my manhood into it. So, you know, you to be a man. So, so hey, you can't do that to me. Of course, I'm going to take the bet. Look, uh, I just got to start with this. The Browns got, I mean, the Browns, see, I'm getting teams mixed up. The Bengals got to the Super Bowl and, and they earned it. I got to say they earned it. But are they the best team that represent the AFC? I would probably say no. Uh, the reason I feel like this game will not even be close is because of the Bengals, the offensive line, our defensive front. And also, you know, we, I'm just a defensive front. We've got Leonard Floyd. If they try to double team Aaron Rodgers, we got, I mean, uh, Aaron Donald, we got Leonard Floyd. We've got Von Miller. I mean, and then all of a sudden, we got the secondary. We got Jalen Ramsey back there. If you want to take shots down the field, this football team lost to the Browns twice. Let's don't forget that. Twice. I, and you know, I, see, if I always call them the Cleveland Clown, and I still call the Cincinnati Bungles, even though they're in the Super Bowl, <laughs> good football team. Don't get me wrong, good football, young football team. We have veteran players. I wish you're talking about OBJ. Look, OBJ, all of us, when we come in the league, we do dumb stuff. Mm-hmm. Shannon, you know this as well yep. as I do. We're young. I can tell you, OBJ has been nothing but a, a bright star with this football team. He's, he's, he's business-like. And, and he's in the Super Bowl. He's not with the Browns anymore. With them, you know, the Clowns, what are you going to call the Browns? He's not with the New York Giants anymore. He's with the Los Angeles Rams. You don't hear anything coming out of this camp. This is a very good, solid football team. And you know why I took that bet? Because I believe, and I'll say this again, if we don't turn the football over once, this game won't even be close. You care to respond? Go ahead. Yeah, I do, <laughs> Mr. Rambassador. <laughs> <laughs> so if you gave me 21 – and you think that Joe Burrow is going to get destroyed by your entire defensive front, starting with Aaron Donald. If you think he might go down nine times the way he did at Tennessee, mm-hmm. h- help me out. Do you think you'll win by, again, you gave me 21. Will you win by 28 or 35 <laughs> or 42? G- give me some hey. idea of a final <laughs> score. <laughs> I said the score would be like 35 to 14, something like that. I mean, you know, and, and to me, that's, that, that, that's close. I mean, that, that's keeping it close. Wait, wait, that's, close. That's, that's like a push, right? That's, yeah. that's like That ain't close. The 35 14 in Super Bowl. That, 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 that's close. <laughs> that, that's close. That, that's close. That's close. That's <laughs> close. Hey, and, and, and the best part about it is, Skip, you can, they can, they, they don't, I can say all I want. They, I have no bulletin board material. You know how this, Shannon. When you say something during the week, they put it on the bulletin board. Yeah. They ain't going to get a chance to hit me. I can say what I want to say. <laughs> so I'm going to say what I want to say, what I've been telling the man across from me now for a couple of weeks, really for three weeks. There's just something about Joe Burrow that is very special. That team follows him. It plays over its helmets for him because it trusts him to come up biggest in the biggest moments in the biggest games. That's why I think the the offensive line, obviously the glaring weak link on the bungles, will play out of its minds, will lay down its lives to at least hold off and, and try to play to a tie with your pass rush and give him just enough time to pick you to pieces. That's what I believe is going to happen. Okay. One thing is, you must remember, we have an offense also with a guy named Matt Stafford that everyone hates on, including you, Skip. Matt Stafford can't win a playoff game. He hadn't done this in a playoff game. I met a guy yesterday who said the last time the Detroit Lions won a playoff game, he said Matt Stafford, was, Matt Stafford was three years old. So that goes to show you, look, Detroit, I, it, it did not help. He, he did, he did his, the best he could in Detroit. He's on a new football team. This football team is loaded. I mean, we're a loaded team. You know, Cooper Cup, OBJ, we've got Cam Akers back. And like I said, once again, here is a guy that's done everything that he's come here to do, Matt Stafford, is get us into this big game. We won, we beat Arizona. Oh, well, he didn't throw the ball or nothing. You know, you know they, they did the run the game. Okay, we go down to Tampa. 
oh, uh, yeah, well, you know, it, 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 he almost had a pick. We had 42 seconds left in the game. He come back and win the game, put us in a position to win the game. Well, we play San Francisco. If, I can't think of the kids now, if he'd have caught that ball, dark, dark. the game would have been over. I say, they always say that. when They say that to losers. Losers say that. <laughs> if we'd have had more time, you know, we'd have did this. If we'd have did that, we'd have had a first down, we'd have did that. Look, I know you like Joe Burr. I like Joe Burr. I like when he came out. I really do. I think I think he's a great quarterback. But this is primetime football. Mm-hmm. It really is. This is a big game for him. This is his first Super Bowl. This is the Bengals' first Super Bowl in, what, 30-something years? I mean, this team is a good a good football team. I'm taking away, especially offensively. But this football team, to me, is not ready for this game. Okay. But you go ahead. If I go one more go time. Ahead. Mr. Rambassador, back to your yes, new sir. quarterback <laughs> that I don't trust. <laughs> He's got the haywire gene in him, and he will go haywire when you least expect it or least need him to. And I'm going to remind you, Matthew Stafford, this year with the Rams, led the NFL in interceptions. He threw four pick sixes this year. It's hard to throw two in a year. He threw four. It's going to manifest itself. It's going to to come home to roost in the biggest game on the biggest stage in your house because I think there's more pressure on your favored team to rise and shine in its house than there is on the bungles, as you call them. So I don't trust Matt Stafford in this game on this stage the way you do. Okay, Skip, let me let me ask you this question. I mean, this is hypothetically, which it's gonna be it's gonna become a reality. So when Matt Stafford wins this game, and let's just say he throws for 240 yards, I'm just going, I'm going to go low, throw for 240 yards, you know, let's say two touchdowns, will that be enough for you to get off his back? Or will you still always, Matt Stafford, he did this. He did, <laughs> well, he's not the guy. I say it again. Matt Stafford was in Detroit. That's like being in Sing Sing prison. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> he well, wait, he wait. finally got out of jail. I, you know what? I think the people in Detroit are happy for Matt Stafford. He, he was in Sing Sing with Megatron, right? That's a pretty uh, good okay. cellmate, right? To have Megatron as your cellmate in Sing Sing, yeah. I'd say. And he who, went. Who, now, 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 yeah, he was 16 who, who was games under 500. Who, who was your running back? Who was your running game? I can say they had no running game. Yeah, they had one. They had one great receiver in Matt Stafford. That's it. I mean, I can say, I would use my, even my, excuse me, Stan, cut even myself. I never played with a great quarterback. I mean, I wish I would have had a great quarterback, but I never did. So I look at this game as Matt Stafford finally has all the pieces he needs to win this football game. I know everybody, Matt Stafford, I mean, I'm so tired of hearing about Matt Stafford can't do this. Matt Stafford, <laughs> I'll predict it. I'll predict this. I'm, I'm going to even say this. Shit, skip, and I, I'm not going to bet. This, but I'm not going to bet nothing. Matt Stafford will be MVP of this football game. Okay, if he is, I will give him a standing ovation <laughs> on Monday because I don't think he you will be. Him. You, you promise that. <laughs> I, I do. I promise that. But you're going to owe me $500 if they don't win by 21 or more points. Uh, Edie, I'm with you, Edie. I took the Rams because I believe this is the most complete team the Bengals would have faced offensively, defensively. I'm going to give the Bengals special teams. I think their kicker is better than, than the Rams kicker, E.D. Uh, McPherson. But other than that, I think the Rams offense is better. I think the Rams – I know the Rams defense is better. Coaching – as long as Sean McVay doesn't try to get too cute, sometimes, Edie, you know, we was in the box uh, uh, two weeks ago, and we looking at each other like, man, what are you doing? Thank you. Just line up and just get the quarterback sneak. You ain't got to motion Doing. the guy outside, motion him back inside, split the guy out. Just line up and go run the football. I think, that, look, the Rams, the, the biggest thing that what people have gone to notice, ED, is that the Rams defensive line has done a great job neutralizing the opposing team's run game. So you take the run game away, now I can go hunt. Now I'm hunting your quarterback. You see how they got, how they got after Kyler Murray. You see how they, how they got after Tom Brady. They didn't get the pressure at in the beginning on Jimmy Garoppolo. But if you look at the fourth quarter, when Aaron Donald and, and Leonard Floyd and Von Miller needed to get home, needed to turn the heat up on it to make it start boiling, they started getting home. Mm. And their offensive line and the Bengals' offensive line isn't nearly as good as the offensive line from Tampa and San Francisco. Mm. So with that being said, I think the game is going to be relatively close. I took the uh, the Rams 31-27. Skip took the Bengals, what, 20, 23-21? 23-21. And you got 35-14. I don't know about all that 35-14, E.D. 
<laughs> especially in the Super Bowl. But, but I think it's going to be a barn burn of a game. Mm. At least that's what I'm hoping. That's what you said. That's what you're hoping. And, and, and I think a lot of Bengals fans are hoping that, look, I'll say it again, we're a lot better football. It's our game to lose is what it is. I mean, and Joe Burrows, like him as a quarterback, really like him a lot. But I really believe that this game is going to really show because he's a young quarterback. This is his first Super Bowl. He's on his second year. It's like Dan Marino. My God, even though Dan, Dan came in his second year, didn't have, didn't have a running game, didn't have much of an offense, just receivers. So I still believe that we would dominate this game. We don't turn the football over. We dominate this football game. Dominate. dominate. I'll say it again. Dominate. Dominate. You heard it. ED, we will hey. speak on Monday. How about that? Oh, <laughs> uh, all right. I also have the Rams winning this one, ED, but it's not by that much. But either way, I am wishing you well. I know it's going to be a busy weekend for you, and we will discuss whether or not you're happy on Monday. I, I look forward to it, guys. No mercy. Despite being ninth in the Western Conference with a record of 26 and 30, the LA Lakers didn't make any moves before the trade deadline. And now LeBron's team will reportedly shift their focus to the buyout market to improve the roster. So, Shannon, why didn't the Lakers do anything yesterday? We had no money. You know what I'm saying? You, I grow it up, we just couldn't go when they put the stuff out. We had to wait for the sale. Huh. But it's all, everything is already picked over. So uh, the buyout market means buyout market. the buyout market. Wait everybody done picked over everything. Done mm. made the trades they wanted. I don't think the buyout market will change <laughs> your life. There was Skip. There was not a trade out there that was going to change the Lakers' life. And here's the thing: they spent all their draft capital on the last two trades they made, mm. getting Anthony Davis, getting Russell Westbrook. So they were handicapped. They handicapped themselves by doing this. Now, obviously, the AD situation. We get that. We got a championship out of AD. Um, and but the Russ situation did not go as well as planned. And you hear our coming sources of, of saying that Lakers staff and said, you know what, we didn't think it would be this bad. We thought it would turn out better than what it has with Russell Westbrook. And clearly that hasn't been the case. But Skip, when you don't have anything, I'm glad they just didn't give away that first round pick in 2027 and Russ for John Wall. I'm good with that, Skip. Nothing was going to change our future. We're going to be in the play in. I think we're five. We're in the ninth spot. We're five games clear. You move up a spot here or there, you're going to be in the play in. That's why I don't see them getting up to the sixth spot, avoiding the play in. I don't see that, Skip. They're going to be in the play in and, and, you know, probably going to have to face the Warriors or the Phoenix Sun in the first round. Who knows? Might even be Memphis in the first round. You got Memphis- them winning the play in? Yeah, I got to win and play in. Yeah, we're we going to beat the brakes on somebody to play in. Really? I don't know how much. But at the end of the day, Skip, I think next, I think yeah. the summer is the best chance to get off Russ and ex, an uh, expiring contract. You'll be able to move him. But everybody knows you. So, Skip, in a situation like this, people are going to try and fleece you. They know you want to make a move. And so I'm going to try to fleece you. Hey, you need me as a ride? Hey, back in the day, Skip, you know, hey, I need to go to town. Uh, where your car? My car is not working. I'm going to charge you a little extra because I know you need me. Mm. So and what I normally charge $5 since you really need me, I'm going to charge you 10 mm. So that's what the Lakers were up against. They don't want John Wall. They don't want Russ. But if we can extrapolate an extra first-round pick out of the situation, mm. we gladly take him off your hands. Mm. Lakers say, nah, we done made too many bad decisions over the last year and a half. We good. We going to mm. sit tight. Talk Russ to come in and off the bench. Russ needs to understand. Russ wants to play like Russ with AD and LeBron on the court. Can't. Come off of the second unit, then you can be Russ, like we saw in Charlotte. He can be Russ, get with the second unit. LeBron and AD come back. Boom. Everything, everybody happy. That's how we're going to have to do it moving forward. You think he will literally sit still on the bench for coming off the bench? He ain't got no not. choice. Really? He ain't got no choice. What are the okay. options? Uh, he could go James Harden on you and just sort of quit his way out of town. Well, hell, right? he ain't giving us. He he seems like he quitting right now mm. with all those turnovers and what he been giving us. Mm. You sure he hadn't done that already? Mm. Oh, he been playing hard all the time. Damn, who knew? He plays hard on offense. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's why he turned the ball over a hundred times a game. Solo act of a stat machine. I told you from the start. I said it the first week of the season. He should come off the bench with the shock. You did. He should be Ginobili because he could be a great Ginobili at this stage in this age of his career. Yes. What it felt like yesterday was that the front office was resigned to what you are and what you're not. Yes. It felt like. They're giving up the way it felt like LeBron gave up after the Milwaukee game and after the loss at Portland because all of his 
postgame remarks were concession speech kind of remarks. I'm tired as hell. I, I just want some wine and I want to go to bed. Yeah. That, that's, I can't do this anymore because we got no shot. And I think that even though it was a small sample size, that the game at Portland sent shockwaves up through the front office because they thought if LeBron and AD can't beat that team by themselves with no rust for the first time in 55 games, well then why should we give up our 2027 first round to, to get rid of him? Right. Because that's what you're doing. You're, you're swapping you, uh, you're just doing addition by subtraction. I'm paying that's you more money doing. to take something off my that's, hand. That's what you're doing. I'm, I'm giving you a 2027. We're only 20. That's five years five from now. Five years from now. Because you've given up all the rest of it, right? Right, correct. Well, if you gave up that, which I would have done because I just think it's addition by subtraction just to, to clear the decks of Russ because he's just going to be an ongoing problem that will haunt your whole team. The fog that LeBron talked about after the Portland game, it's it's really emanating from number zero, who has zero rings. Right. It starts and finishes with him. Right. But the front office said, w w we're going to get rid of him for what? Because we got rid of him by accident, you know, by, by benching him right? and, and, you know, yeah. his back tightened up. Right. His back tightened up. And it did us no good because right. we lost to Portland. Right. What? And and you look at it, Skip, they say, you know what we are? We're a seven through nine seed. That's what we are. They just said, okay, they, that's it. And so we're going we're gonna to ride this thing out for the rest of the year, get into the play-in tournament, win that game. Well, you got to win two games because you're the play-in. You got to play win two you, games you have to win before two you games. get to the real. That is correct. <laughs> you get to the real tournament. That is correct. I'm going to read you one line out of the athletics report yesterday just to drive home this point. It says... The Lakers traded for Russell Westbrook because LeBron James recruited him and paved the way for a deal. Rob Polinka, the GM, obviously, Rob Polinka had a better trade ready with the Kings. But what was he to do? Say no to LeBron? Right. Well, obviously, no. no. He was not going to say no. LeBron wanted Russ, and, and I believe he wanted him for two reasons, because he wanted to show the NBA world, I can do it with him when KD couldn't, and obviously Hard. James couldn't, and you can go back to Paul George and Kawhi. and right. Nobody wants any part of Russ. LeBron's like, I'll show you. And I think he's now resigned to the fact, just give him a glass of wine, let him go to bed, because it, it's just impossible to overcome well, it. Well, if that was the case that, that – LeBron recruited him, that means LeBron said, nah, we're going to hold tight with him there. Could be. His pride's on the line. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. But, I, Skip, I think the thing is, look, Russ is who is what he is. But he tried to do what he normally does with two other superstars because he's never had to play with two guys that are better than him. He's always been either one. Okay, see, once KD left, he was clearly the number one. Yep. He was number one, 1A, one 2, 2A. Okay. okay, he goes to Houston, yep. and he blends in because he and James Harden's going to take all the shots. That's true. He goes to uh, D.C. He and Bradley Beal's going to take all the shots, so he can be what he. Now you third, third. Ain't no skip. Ain't, there, there's rarely, there's rarely an occasion that you're going to have a third guy get 20, 25 shots, especially if Russ is on the team because yep. the turnovers are going to be too high. That is correct. So finally, LeBron James going into this year, LeBron basketball genius, highest IQ, I believe, in the game. He saw his way clear that, hey, if I try Russ and it doesn't work out, that I'm the goat and I often need a scapegoat if it doesn't work in the bitter end. Well, he was thinking about if it didn't work with Russ in the Western Conference Finals. Right. Not this way. Th this is disaster. Yeah, you can't, even win the, you can't even win in the regular season. That, that's what I'm saying. It's so bad that LeBron's like, what did I, what was I thinking? Yeah, you know, like, like this is a disaster now where, where you're going to have to play in. Right. You're not thinking of the Western Conference Finals. You're thinking, of, can we even get in the tournament? Yeah, Skip, it's like, you go from recruiting, recruiting Dane mm -hmm. to all of a sudden, it's like I got Wagyu. I got I got a choice. Wagyu. It's like, sir, Mr. Shaw, we're out of Wagyu. Okay, well, give me Vienna sausage. <laughs> what the heck? Whoa, well, Skip, how I go from Wagyu to Vienna? That's Russ. <laughs> Russ is so far from what Dame is. Now, granted, Dame is hurt right now. He is. But I still would take him. 
If they if, if, if I could trade Dame Lillard and no Dame Russ, yeah. Oh, who wouldn't do that? And a couple of other pieces too. Yeah, I I, I thought it was buying a sausage. Vienna, Vienna. We're running. That is that's not Wagyu. That's not Kobe A five. That's not what it is. But look, Russ needs to accept what he is and what he isn't. Agreed. And we're, we're the last to see it, though, Skip. Ugh. You think uh, Russ thinks he's different? No, he's as delusional as they come. <laughs> kind of in his own world lately. Yeah. No mercy. Well, Joe Burrow is a man of many nicknames, but Joe Cool is the one that needs to be on display this Sunday in SoFi Stadium. However, head coach Zach Taylor has no worries as he stated, quote, he's built for this stage. So Shannon, Pro Football Focus listed Burrow, the second best player in this game behind Aaron Donald. So scale of one to 10, how much do you trust Burrow to have a big game, a huge game? I'm going three. Um, and Skip, because we haven't seen really those games in the postseason. We know what he's capable of. He threw for the third most passing yards in a single game in NFL history, 525 behind Norman and Brockland's 554, Warren Moon 527 against the Kansas City Chiefs in 1990. I remember that. I was like, dang, a lot of yards. Um, but I don't know if he's faced – well, he's faced this kind of pressure. He's got sacked the most of any quarterback in the NFL, so he's faced pressure. The Tennessee Titans got him nine times. But the Tennessee Titans' offense doesn't po- didn't pose the threat that the Rams' offense can pose – and the Rams can get can generate that kind of pressure. Unless Tennessee just runs it down. Unless, unless they run it down. they couldn't. Right, they right. Out. And so that's the thing. T- uh, uh, Raheem Morris has done a great job of saying, guys, in order for us to attack the quarterback, we first must make them one-dimensional by shutting down the run. We must deter them. It also helps, Skip, to get away from the run if that you jump out to a lead. Because more times than not, teams jump out to a lead. You want to throw the ball to catch up, and now you play into the Rams' hand. So the big game, what we're accustomed to seeing, um, his QBR, 55 against Kansas City, 28 against Tennessee, 63 against the Raiders. He's had four touchdowns in three games with two interceptions. So by his standard, he's played. he hadn't played to what we know he's capable of playing, especially when you mention the big game, what we've seen. Go to Alabama. Uh, neutral side against Texas, mm. SEC championship game, yep. Oklahoma, Clemson. We know we saw him against uh, uh, Kansas City in Cincinnati, Baltimore in Cincinnati. Go to Baltimore and throw for another four bills plus on him. So we know he's capable of having a big game. I just don't believe he'll have that type of game in this game. So it's not that you don't trust him in a vacuum. Right. You just don't trust him under the fire he's going to be under. Yeah, I don't expect them to. I don't expect them to have 350 and four touchdowns against this defense. In, unless you just think this stage will be a little too big for a second-year player. No, I think Aaron Dollar and Von Miller will be too big. Okay, so it's not about Burrow. It's about the Rams. Yes. Yes. Right. Yes. Okay. I, I'd written down before the show I was going to go nine on a scale of ten, but yeah. after I've listened to you for this whole show, I'm going to ten. See, so you I, can see, oh, so, ten okay, ten. you're going to be sorry. Yeah, I'm not going to be sorry okay. because this game ultimately will belong to Joe Burrow. Something about him. They know there's something about him. That's why he will inspire his team, including his defense, to, to play its best game of the year okay. in this game. And I get you about the pass rush, but again, I'm not saying he's ever going to be Tom Brady. I'm just telling you he's the closest thing left to, to Tom Brady if, in fact, Tom is gone for good. Mm-hmm. Not sure about that. But <laughs> he's the closest thing because he's got the gift for playing the position that I don't see in Mahomes or Josh Allen or Lamar or whoever those young – they're all – sensationally talented in their different ways. Right. I'm talking about the gift of playing this position that's unlike any other position on the football field. Because, it's, Skip, he's the lead of those guys you mentioned, he's the least athletic. That's Tom Brady I'm, could play that I, position I, I because it. he was the least athletic. You're playing it with this yes. as much as this. Right. Now, you you got to have the arm and oh, you need the, the release. And, and I think he's got supreme hand-eye coordination mm-hmm. because he was a very good high school basketball player mm-hmm. and he loved playing DB or wide out in football, <laughs> and he got more of a kick out of those positions than he got out of quarterback. So he has a physical toughness about him that I don't think Tom Brady had because right. I, I think Brady just realized right away, I, I don't want any of that. Right. Not that he wouldn't 
take right. his socks and take his medicine. Well, that's what you do, up. Skip. You see, hey, oh, you coming? Oh, I, I, I will live to see another day. I'm gonna go yeah. ahead and drop. I'm not gonna let you put any undue press, any undue hits on me. Yeah, this kid will try to run for first downs yeah. on third and seven. Yes, and he pulled it off a couple of times at Kansas City. That shocked me mm-hmm. because he has. Some athletic, but not yeah. a lot. We're yes. not talking about Lamar, mm-hmm. Michael Vick, anybody. It's not like that. But he can run a little bit, right. enough to make him dangerous. Keep the student. chains moving, yes. yes. he can make the chains move. But he, he nearly <laughs> wrecked another season against Green Bay in week five because he went diving in for a, a first down on third and long and took a shot in the throat and had to go to the hospital. Mm-hmm. So he's not going to live long doing it this way. Right. But he's on a magic carpet ride this year. Right. And his physicality was on full display against the Titans because he wasn't taking Brady give up sacks. Because Brady, when he sees he wants to live to fight another player, right, you right. know what he does? He just folds up yes. and says, you got me. Mm-hmm. You got me. Let's yes. try it again. Mm-hmm. Now it's second and 10. Okay. Right. Or no, second and 15. Deep. Right. Right. Okay. So. The, the point is, Burrow is very much like Brady, but very different. But where he's like him, and as he said so eloquently the other day, there are two ways to beat that rush. And the first way is, you just got to get rid of the football on time. Right. And he is the best of the young quarterbacks at speed reading and finding the most open receiver quicker than the defense can get to him. Right. And delivering an eminently catchable football mm-hmm. that is thrown so so sweetly that you as a receiver are like, it's going to catch me. Right. Like, it's, it's right here. I can't help but catch this ball. Mahomes can throw it too hard. He's, he's gotten better at some of his touch passes. Mm-hmm. But Josh Allen sometimes just throws it too hard. Yeah. I mean, he's just going to throw it through a brick wall. Right. But, but this kid's got s- enough velocity and a whole lot of touch. That, that makes him work. That's why Jamar, who, who was the offensive rookie of the year last yeah. night? It was Jamar Chase. Yeah, it wasn't close. Okay, it wasn't close because that's a weapon. Yes. T. Higgins is a possession receiver weapon right. for him. Big body. I, I, yeah, and, and again, Tyler Boyd, is he's a pretty good three, yeah. right? Yep. And Uzama, I think he's going to try. He's been talking big about he's going to go swimming in Chile if, he, yeah. if they win right. this game. But the point is, I think... I think he's got a sprained MCL. I think he's going to go, and he's a real security blanket. But here's the thing, Skip. Going, how effective will he, know. how impactful will he be on the game it's if a, he does play? It's a great question. Right. But, Skip, when I, when I, we, we're talking about, I, I think we both would agree. I'm in agreement. I think Joe Burrow is special. But the big game that we really haven't seen him, where the, the three, the four touchdown game, we haven't seen that in the playoffs. They've won. But what we're talking about, is he going to have one of those Tom Brady, one of those 375, four touchdown games, one of these four, one of these Kurt Warner type games where he throws for 400? Okay. Or is he is he capable? Yes. yes. Do I believe he'll have it? No, I don't. Okay, I don't think he'll need it because I think it's going to be lower scoring than you think. Okay. And remember, Brady won a lot of playoff games with pedestrian numbers because that's all that was required of that game. Right. It, 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 he doesn't. He doesn't play with some huge ego. He doesn't need to throw up between his legs, right. behind his back, no look, left-handed. Right. He, he just plays. Well, they can dig, well you skip, skip, when you have a defense like what Tom Brady had, you can kind of dictate the terms. Now, you know, we, we've seen him win a 13-3 ball game. We've seen him win low-scoring ball games. But we also seen him say, okay, I need to go get 38 today. Okay. And so I got to get that. So your defense can dictate that. Can the Cincinnati Bengals dictate? What type of game Joe Burrow needs to have as far as that? You know what? If he throws for 235, a touchdown or two, can we still win the game? Okay. Or does he need to have 375 and three touchdowns in order to win? Okay. If he does, they probably won't win. If, it, if you need that big enough, anything approaching 400, right. I'm, I'm not sure. Because they're really good on defense right. and it's a really good rush. Some- the quarterback's best friend, the old saying goes, is Joe Mixon. That's right. who's going to be his best yeah, friend. Th- that could be, you know, for both teams. Yep. Cam Akers, and we were, Skip, we're talking about the quarterback, oh, and they're the favorite. Matthew Stafford is yep. one. I think Joe Burrow is two. Okay. And it might be a running back. All right. Final point. Last night I'm watching NFL Honors, uh-huh. and my man Dak is front and center, and they keep showing him and showing him. I'm thinking – He's got to be in line to win one of these awards. It has to be Comeback Player of the Year. Guess who it was? Joe Burrow. Joe Burrow. And and I can't argue with it. You're right. We forgot about that, Skip, because we thought it was a four-goal conclusion. But people forgot Joe Burrow tore his knee up, and he came back also. He came back. (laughs) He did. You're right. I was kind of surprised. I think, yeah. But throwing for 525 in the game, 446, that'll do it. Yeah, okay. No mercy. 
Bringing in Matthew Stafford. Yeah, it made sense for L.A. And the Rams needed Stafford to get over the hump. And Stafford needed to be a part of a stable organization with talent. And now the veteran is listed as the favorite to win MVP this weekend, according to Fox Bet Sportsbook. What a difference a year makes, right? Shannon, scale of 1 to 10, how much do you trust Matthew Stafford to have an MVP performance? Eight and a half. Um, I think he's proven skip. Now, he, he's halfway home. He's winning the race. Because, you know, the expectations were you make this trade, you give up Jerry Goff, who had taken you to a Super Bowl, and two number one picks, you mortgage your future. You ain't really got a whole lot of picks. Trade a second and third for, for a Von Miller. Yep. And so he's proven thus far that I can perform well on the big stage. Get you to, he won your division, go on the road, outdo Tom Brady, down 10 in the fourth quarter with the, uh, uh, Sean McVay teams. Hadn't won a game in which they yep. down by 10 points in the fourth quarter. He's done his part. Now he just has to finish the task. Yep. The task is right here in front of him. You couldn't ask. He got to sleep in his bed every night, Skip. He did. He got to practice on the field that he knew very well. So nothing is out of the ordinary. You didn't have to do anything. Nothing changes for you. Night for the game, you stay, on, you stay in the hotel night for a game anyway. The only thing that's going to change, nothing changes. Nothing changes for you. Everything changes for the Bengals. Yep. You're on the road. You're practicing on the road. Normally, you just, you're flying to that Saturday, stay at the hotel, wake up, go play. But you've been on the road for, better, for almost a week now. So I trust him. He finished fourth in QBR behind Rodgers, MVP, Brady, and Justin Herbert. Skip, look, I know Jerry Goff got this team to a Super Bowl once. But Jerry Goff isn't as good a quarterback as Matthew Stafford is. And I trust him eight and a half mm. to get it done, to have an MVP, an MVP type performance. Mm. He's going to have to play well in order for them to have a chance. Mm. But as I say, he could win the MVP. They might run the ball with Cam Makers. The slow, uh, uh, and, and, but I'm going Matthew Stafford to win the MVP. If, mm. I, had to lay my, if I had to put my money mm. uh, on it, I would say Matthew Stafford's going to win a uh, Super Bowl MVP. Mm. By the way, Cam Akers through the playoffs averaging 2.9 yards per row. And he, and he has a hard, hard time holding on to the ball, too. That is another fact. <laughs> okay, I love the way you summed this up. Matthew Stafford has won three of the four requisite playoff games you need to win to, to solidify this trade that, mm-hmm. you, that they made for you. Right. And... He's only halfway home because mm-hmm. this is the final leg yeah. of this relay the most race. most important. And this is it. And it adds up to half the battle. Right. Th- this is it right here. So you won three, but you better win this one. Yes. Okay. Scale of one to ten, my trust factor here for Matthew Stafford is a three. Hello. A three. And I like Matt Stafford. I belong to the golf club that he recently joined. They're about to vote you out. They might. They might after by Monday. I might be voted out. It's highly possible (laughs) I will be. I once interviewed Matthew Stafford at the Eli Brady second Super Bowl, which was in Indianapolis. Indianapolis. And I like the heck out of him because he's highly likable. Mm -hmm. But he's always been a playmaker and a mistake maker. That's been his M.O. for all these many years, Mm -hmm. most of them obviously in Detroit. Yes. Playmaker, because you want to talk about arm talent. He's at the top of the list on that. I'm not sure anybody has more arm talent than he has. Mm -hmm. And, And he's not. He's older, but he's obviously not old. Right. Well, he's 34? Yeah, he's fine. He's, I mean, Brady just got to 44. So yeah, about to be 45. Yeah, so yeah. yeah there you go. <laughs> Playmaker, mistake maker, because he did come to L.A., and in Hollywood, he led the NFL in interceptions. Got a couple of bad breaks. Four picks, sixes. Four. How do you throw four in one year? That, those are some bad breaks, too, because yeah. those are really – but but when you – that that means that – You've got that haywire gene going on where when you least expect it, he'll throw one to the other team, and he threw it to the 49ers, and Tart couldn't hold on to it. Threw the early interception to Cooper Cup because it was high and behind him, bounced up off his shoulder pad up into the air, and that was the end of that deal. You you should have had seven, and you got none. I just believe this is going to be a very close game. Unlike our man, the Rambassador, believes. <laughs> you, you, you believe it's going to be a I do, absolutely. A, a battle to the bitter mm-hmm. end. And because of that, it's going to be a, a one-play game. One quarterback. It, it's just like Bengals at Tennessee. That was a, It was one play on each side. It came down to one throw, Burrow to Jamar Chase. Mm-hmm. And it came down to one throw, Ryan Tannehill to you got it picked off. Eli Apple. Right? Mm-hmm. This will be the same. And I believe that. 
Matt Stafford will, will make the one mistake that will turn the tide in the Bengals' favor and that Burrow will make the one throw that will win the game and win him the MVP. So I, I believe that so strongly that I still think Matt's going to put up some nice numbers. Mm-hmm. But, but my trust factor is a three because I believe somewhere along that Super Bowl trail, he'll throw it to the Bengals. Well, Skip, you know all, all turnovers are not created equal. Nope. When does he uh, 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 make the mistake? And at what area of the field does he make the mistake? And so I think the thing is, if Matthew Stafford can avoid the late turnover, yep. those would doom you, Skip. You're going in, you can try, have a chance to drive the nail in the coffin, or you have the chance to tie the ball game and you turn the ball over late. Okay. You can overcome a turnover yep. in the first quarter, the first half of the ball game. Okay. As the game gets into the waning moments, turnovers, you start to play a little bit more on, okay. on the turnover I, factor. I still believe with nine minutes left in the fourth quarter of the San Francisco Rams game, when he threw it to Tart. And, and I don't know who he's throwing to. It was kind of 50-50. Yeah, had Van Jefferson. And it's, like, to okay, it's just like he threw it right down the middle. In the middle, oh, yeah. I'll, I'll Somebody the down there. Yeah. You know, like Kyle say, well, such and such is down there. <laughs> and Joe Burrow now says, well, you know, uh, Jamar's down there somewhere. Somewhere. He said, well, I got one guy down there. Okay. And, and the intended receiver ended up being Tart, so, yeah. who just It's going to be a DB. Okay. If he I, could catch, he'd be a wide receiver. I got it, but it's one of those punts. It's like yeah. catching a punt. And yet the, the point is, if he catches that ball, they're still down. The Rams are down 17 to 14 at that point. I just think the momentum swings so wildly yeah. back in the favor of the 49ers. I think they're going to the Super Bowl. Yeah. Okay, so that was a, a, a fairly late mistake, mm-hmm. early fourth quarter, but fairly late. And I believe you will see a repeat of that, and I don't believe the Bengals will drop it. You think so? I trust Matthew Stafford. Yeah, well, yeah. you better. I trust Aaron Donald even more. Okay. And Von Miller even more. Okay. All right. And Leonard Floyd okay. and Gaines and All Robinson. Right. Okay. Well, you got the Hollywood All Stars on your side. You, we'll you, see. You trust Sean McKay? I mean, if I, I got, got if I got a big budget, if I got a big budget movie, you think I can have B list actors mm-hmm. in it? Or I got to go get the heavy hitters? Denzel, mm-hmm. you up? Mm. Mark Wahlberg, you up? Yep. Hanks, Cruz, you mm. up? Sam Jackson, you up? Mm. Get Charlize Theron. I gotta get. I gotta get heavyweight. Mm. This is a big time, man. You got a five billion dollar stadium. Mm. You think who am I supposed to try out there? Jimmy G. Mm. <laughs> that what you want me to have? Unhappy <laughs> ending. This is gonna have one. No, I don't know that. Yeah, the LA audience will not like it. Well, good luck. Can I do my? I want to do my part from. Hey, what? Uh, Charlie, you and Wit, give me some cameras. I'm going to do my part from SoFi on Monday. Are you? I'll be doing a hangover to come in. Really? <laughs> yep. You're just going to stay? They yep. Celebrate? They won't Towel haggardly. You and Odell. <laughs> I need to see you on the field. So yeah, you know, hey. The case. <laughs> I get I get a play. Hey, Matt. Matthew Stafford, Aaron what? Donald, Odell. I got it. I think you won't show up on Monday because you will be so ashamed of your pick. Nope, nope, nope. Something about a visual of you celebrating <laughs> is what I would like to see. Okay, but but we have to make sure that actually happens, Shannon, first, because Skip obviously believes it's not the case. No mercy. I love that. I love that smile from Aaron Donald. Uh, he has all of the accolades you could ask for, aside from a Super Bowl ring, from three Defensive Player of the Year awards to several first-team All-Pros to All-Decade Team honors. And Pro Football Focus even ranked him as the best player in the game this weekend, and now he gets to face a questionable Bengals O-line on the red-hot Joe Burrow right now. So, Shannon, will he wreck the game? Yeah, he has that potential to do that, Skip. Um, the, the question is, how much attention are you going to devote to him? Are you saying, Aaron Donald, we will not allow you to wreck the game, but Von Miller and Leonard Floyd, we're going to leave you one-on-one with our tackles? Mm. Because that's the only way you neutralize him. I don't believe they have a guard that can handle Aaron Donald on a consistent basis one-on-one. He knows he's going to have to win. Even on some of the double teams, he's going to have to get home. And I believe he's more than capable of that, Skip. He's the best defensive player in the game. You mentioned yesterday... He had an off year by his standard and still got three votes for Defensive Player of the Year. That just goes to show you how dominant he is. Seven first-team All-Pros, Defensive Rookie of the Year, three-time Defensive Player of the Year. He's going to be a two-time All-Decade player in the 10s and the 20s. When he's all set, but he knows there's one more box he got to check. Skip, you know, you go to the doctor, they ask you, you know, check, fill out the questionnaire, and they ask you to check all the boxes. Yep. He knows there's one box. And they say, oh, excuse me, Mr. Sharp, you, you forgot a box. Aaron Donald knows there's one well, box. Those are usually bad boxes, though. <laughs> yeah. like, like, what's wrong with you? Yeah, yeah. any broken ball, anything. Yeah. Uh, so he knows there's one box left for him to check. 
Mm. He checks that box. Now. It's over. All I'm doing right now, I'm adding to this. I want to leave no doubt mm. that when people say LT, they're going to say, what about Aaron Donald? Yeah. That's what he's heading for. He wins this game. Now, I don't know, Skip, I, I, I don't know if I'll be around to ever see a D. Unless he gets, gets 30 sacks in a season, I don't know how a defensive player, given the way the, uh, the, uh, the game is catered to the offensive guys now, Skip, I don't see another defensive player winning MVP. Not defensive, but MVP like LT did, like uh, uh, Allen Page did. Yep. But, Skip, you look at his numbers and what he's been able to do. Mm. He's been as good, and I, I played in the era with all those guys, from Johnny Randall to Warren Sapp to uh, uh, Reggie White to Bruce Smith to Dion. This kid racks up with, with any of them. Okay, so I'm not sure you answered Jenny's question. Will he wreck the game? And you said he's capable of, but are you predicting he will wreck the game? Well, Skip, it's like this. He can wreck the game. Are you going to single him or are you going to devote all your attention? Because when you devote all your attention, it says, well, he's not going to beat us within Von Miller. I believe he has a very similar situation to what Von had in Super Bowl, in Super Bowl 50. You had D. Ware, you had uh, uh, Wolf, and you had Malik Jackson. Yep. And they say, you know what? We're going to we, we gonna do tomorrow. You going to leave Von Miller one-on-one? I, Skip, I don't believe they will leave Aaron Donald one-on-one -on -one with those guards. You said the guards are the weak link of the offensive line. Well, at one guard position, they're just splitting the snaps. It was 35 to 34. They got a second-round rookie out of Clemson, and they got a sixth-round second-year player out of Kansas. And they just go back and forth. How about I do you like this? Aaron Donald have at least a sack and a half. Okay. Well, that would be a lot considering the totals that I see here. Sack and a half. Sack and a half. Well, that's really going out on a limb. Yeah, yeah, I would have put a second. defensive player ever. Get... <laughs> so, to me, Aaron Donald is like Bigfoot. Uh, there you go. Uh, he I, real. Aaron I, Donald I, I is fear, real. I fear the legend of Aaron Donald, but a lot of games I watch, and, and I don't know if, if he exists, because I don't know if Bigfoot really exists. Maybe he does, maybe yeah. he doesn't. I see the grainy tape sometimes, but I, I don't know. Skip the man averaging 12 okay. sacks a season. So I will remind you, last time this team got to the Super Bowl, mm -hmm. lost 13-3, to right. three, they did beat Dallas, and they went and stole a game at New Orleans, and then they lost 13-3 to three in the yeah. Super Bowl. And in those three games, your man, game wrecker, combined for zero sacks. He had zero sacks mm -hmm. in all those three games. Right. I've watched him in five games now in his career against my Dallas Cowboys with a grand total of one sack in five games. How many in, wins? In three of those games, I was like, did 99 play today, or was he hurt? I have to look it up. Is he hurt? No, he played. He oh, wait, he played every snap on defense, and I, I didn't notice him. But, really? here, but Skip, this, this is what the team does. If you says, I'm not going to let him. But what about what did the other guys do? You have Vaughn now. You have and Leonard Floyd. The question was, will he wreck the game? Well, you could make a case he'll wreck the game by allowing three yes, plays exa everywhere exactly. else. Yes, exactly. If, if that's the case yes. you're making, you, you yes. might have me. But through this playoff run, we got Arizona. We got at Tampa Bay. We got San Francisco. <clears throat> Let's see. I'm looking. Oh, I see a sack and a half in three games. You're saying he's going to get a grand total of a sack and a half? In yeah, this in this game. Wow, that's a lot. He had 12 and a half for the year. T.J. Watt won Defensive Player of the Year with 22 and a half, yeah. 10 more sacks. Let me ask you a question. Wow. And, and T.J. Watt deserved to win Defensive Player of the Year. Mm -hmm. But how many, how many general managers will say T.J. Watt is a better defensive player than Aaron Donald? Right now, even after last night, he won that award. That's I, how I, dominant he is. I don't know about that. I know that, about that. That's an interesting No, question. it's not. Because T.J. Watt is hellacious. He is. Terror. He ain't that. Coming off the edge. Well, you've told me that they've been moving Aaron Donald around because they need to maximize his impact by occasionally letting him come off the edge. Well, here's the thing, though, Skip. I can't move him around if it's a, it's a, if it's a first down or obvious running down. I got to put Cannot. him in the D tackle. But when it gets third, third and long, I'm a, I, he, when he tries to find, he moves up and down the line. Let me find it. Let me open, see if I can pull on the door and see which one's unlocked. Okay. Oh, this left guard got the door unlocked. Okay, uh -huh. I'm going in here. Okay. So it's possible that Joe Burrow go down, I don't know, three, four, five times because I would say at he, least four. He, he does go down a lot because 
He's one of those guys, he doesn't mind the physicalities they keep bragging about. That's, that's what inspires the Bengals. He doesn't take, quote-unquote, kill shot type shots, but, but he'll just say, ah, okay, you got me, right. I'll go down. And it's different than Brady going down because Brady just folds his tent and right. goes down before you even really get to him. Right. But Joe Burrow will just sort of... But, Skip, ah, you okay. do know you increase your odds. Mm-hmm. The more chances guys get on you, hit yep. you, even if, they, even if they, don't, you don't, they don't sack you, the more times you land on the ground, the greater the chances are you getting injured. I agree. And the greater chances are of you spitting up the football. Exactly. So Aaron Donald, where he might not have three or four sacks, he dominates the game because he opens up holes for Leonard Floyd. He opens up for Von Miller. Okay. And now you say, okay, mm. not Von. Because with a lead, you see what Von Miller's doing. Oh, do you? Okay. Aaron Donald, MVP, said Shannon Sharp. <laughs> no mercy. So Skip's Cowboys were well represented at NFL Honors last night with Micah Parsons winning Defensive Rookie of the Year and Dak Prescott sitting front row for all the festivities. And Jerry Jones was also in attendance and he spoke with NFL Network on the red carpet. Take a listen. For me, it uh, certainly is a dream come true. I actually was born, I lived in a house about a mile from here. Oh, wow. And uh, so... When the idea of having the stadium here in Inglewood started really growing, uh, my imagination went crazy about this day (laughs) and having a Super Bowl right here in Inglewood and the great city of Los Angeles Mm -hmm. and California. I always remember that with Jerry. That is cool. Like where he started. Skip. Yes, ma'am. How happy were you with the way the Cowboys were represented last night? It was painful. It's embarrassing. Oh. It, it, it was painful. Shoot. It was that bad? My Dallas Cowboys are still oh. front and center. They're still the showcase attraction. Yep. They're still the biggest draw in Hollywood because they are still America's team. They are still the biggest ratings magnet in your sport. <laughs> they are. They are still the most valuable franchise in the world. Owned by one Gerald Wayne Jones Jr., who was the front and center biggest attraction on the red carpet last night. And yet he's telling a story about how he was born in what is now the shadow of SoFi (laughs) in Inglewood in a little two bedroom, one bath house way back when. Yeah. And he he, when he knew that this game was going to be played in Inglewood at this brand new palace of a stadium, he said, he said, my imagination ran wild because he was thinking, my team is going to be there. Yeah. Jerry, you lost in the first round. <laughs> right, exactly. You had it all. Right. You, you had a team you thought was right up there with your <laughs> 90s teams, and you lost in the first round. So don't remind me of that because I can't stomach that anymore. And then they seated my man Dak in the front row with his lady, and they were on display the yeah. whole night. Yeah. And it was hard to watch because – We lost in the first round, and I'm thinking, are you going to win something? Is that why? Because all the other guys, Aaron Rodgers is up close, and and T.J. Watt is up close, because they need to just pop up on stage to get their awards. That got no awards. They just wanted to put America's quarterback front and center to sell it. And right over his shoulder is the great Emmitt Smith, Smith. because – he's still viable. Yes. He's still working. All time Lee rushing in the field. They won. They won yep. three championships mm-hmm. in large part because of that number 22, right. right? So in the end, it just left me lifeless and hapless and hopeless at the end of the night because we won nothing during the season, during the playoffs, or during the honors. Skip, right? it's embarrassing. It's embarrassing that Jerry's up there talking. I yeah. mean, first of all, I don't know if I've ever heard Mike Brown. Have you ever heard Mike Brown, the owner of the Bengals? I, I don't think I've ever just, heard him. Just after the championship yep. game. Stand, he, he actually spoke for like five minutes. And Mr. Cronky, he he's like he's a, a recluse. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. he, he probably skip. He probably wouldn't even speak at the trophy if they he, win. He also spoke right after the Did championship he? game, just briefly. <laughs> Didn't have a lot to say, but, but go ahead. Can you imagine? No, we'd have had to take a commercial break if Jerry if Jerry that, was that in that situation. Yeah. Bob would have had to take a commercial break, come back, and Jerry would have still been talking. Once upon a time, he did. It was so, 1995. So right? let me ask you a question, Skip. You won defensive uh, 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 rookie of the year. Thank you. You won assistant coach of the year. Yeah. Dak was in the running for comeback player of the year. And y'all lost in the first round. Lost in the first round. All that. But we got 11 from heaven. And yet, 
it, it left me flat also that Micah won predictably. The unanimous. The first guy to win a unanimous. Okay. Well, well, he should have been. Yes. You know, that was a foregone. Yeah, that was a foregone. But, but to me, I thought he was in the thick of defensive player well, of the year. He got three votes. Until late. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, they want him to play cornerback. <laughs> I, I don't know. They want him to cover passes. Well, Skip, I don't, think, I don't know how he was going to beat TJ with, with 22 and a half sacks tied to record it would and be missing hard. two full in, games. Unless. You came on really strong the last two or three games, and he actually faded a little bit over yeah. the last Well, like TJ, games. TJ came on really strong, three and a half sack, two fourths fumbles against, and then we saw what he did against Cleveland. Yep. So he had like nine sacks in the last yep. three games, and he he showed he showed why. But Skip, you got I mean, people look at the Cowboys. Cowboys are this illusion of, of what they used to. People look at them and they think today, the Cowboys of yesterday. It's the real oh, remember Skip, okay, I'm looking I, in the I mirror. I got that. And, Except, uh, except the ratings aren't an illusion. No, no, no. But see, that only works for us. We love ratings because mm-hmm. we get to tell the advertisers, hey. we got the Cowboys, you got to pay big bucks. Yeah. But the fans, hold on, Jerry, you tell me every year, this is going to be our year. You and Steve tell us this team reminds us of those dynasties in the 90s. And here and below and behold, we lose in the first huh? round. They're always the most entertaining team to this day <laughs> for the wrong reasons a lot of times, Jealous, right? Jerry selling us a bill of goods, Skip. Well, you're, you're right. And yet, kooky Jerry, at the end of that red carpet that you just heard, he's talking about how SoFi is going to become the image of L.A. will be attached to SoFi. And he says there used to be that Hollywood sign. that used It still is. It's still there, Jerry. Yeah, people clap. The last time I looked, it's still sitting up yeah. there. And trust me, SoFi will never represent L.A. to people around the country. No. It'll always be that sign up that's there on the hillside. Yeah, do you got the Kodak Man thing? No, you, it's not replacing that. <laughs> Yeah, I'm a, yeah. That's my owner. Maybe you hadn't been to L.A. in a I, long I time. may not have been. But the Hollywood sign is always going <laughs> to be the still there. <laughs> oh, my go. gosh. I'm sorry. <laughs> not, they're not going anywhere. <laughs> no. They're still going to be front and center oh. always. No mercy. Before we go, let's revisit uh, your predictions from earlier in the show. Skip is going with the Bengals in a 23-21 upset, while Shannon has got the Rams to win 31-27. I got Rams 27-24, just in case it matters on Monday. So, Shannon, scale 1 to 10. How confident are you in your pick? 10. You're a 10? Me and the Ram I don't believe Me you. Me and the Ram Bass are going to be celebrating yeah. at that monument that Jerry Jones so far stadium. <laughs> It's, it's going to eclipse Hollywood side yep. after what transpires on Sunday. <laughs> so I feel really confident in my pick. Odell, Vaughn, Aaron Donald. Mm. Odell life changed forever. Donald, Aaron Donald's life changed forever. Vaughn is a two-time champion, mm. and that's what I got to say about that. Mm. Good luck with all that. Just because there's no such thing as a sure thing, I'll go nine on a scale of one to ten in my confidence in my pick, but I'm going to say it one last time. There's just something about Joe Burrow. Yep. I believe he and his bungles, as E.D. calls them, <laughs> will pull off the monumental <laughs> upset of the Hollywood All-Stars. You know, it's supposed to be written on the wall for the 49ers. Remember how they won all those games at the end and they beat, went to Lambeau Field and beat Aaron Rodgers? It, oh, it's a sign. Mm. Guess what? We're going to take the sign down. Mm. Yep. Jimmy Gag or Joe Burrow. I think I'll go Joe Burrow. Matthew Stafford, yeah. Sean McVay, mm. Aaron Donald, Von Miller, Leonard Floyd. You got it all. Yes. You should win. What a parade route. Because I'm going to miss. I'm going to be like when the Lakers win the championship and they close the school. Yep. Yeah, I'm missing for You're the parade. You're going to that parade too? <laughs> Don't jinx anything around here. Skip Shannon, enjoy the game. Everyone enjoy mm-hmm. the Super Bowl. I cannot wait yep. to discuss everything that happens on Monday. The Herd's on now. Have a great weekend.